Milwaukee's MX Fuel Equipment System revolutionizes the light equipment market by delivering the performance and durability demanded by the trades. From the MX Fuel cutoff saw to the MX Fuel tower light, MX Fuel has you covered without the hazards associated with emissions, noise, vibrations, and the frustrations of petrol maintenance. MX Fuel Equipment System, equipment redefined. Attention sports fans, planning an overseas trip to catch your favorite games? Look no further than sports where I am. They've got it all. League schedules, trustworthy tickets, and over 200 cities to choose from, all conveniently on one website. Plus, as an Australian company, they know the importance of great customer service for those long haul journeys. So visit sportswhereiam.com and start planning your dream sports trip today. Sports Where I Am, your ticket to an unforgettable sports travel experience. Righto, let's get into the show. Welcome to the Oz American Aces, Mitchie. Yeah, Tommy, thanks for having me, mate. Just talking about agriculture there uh, off the head. I might as well start with what's happening. You're, uh, we're going to dive into heaps of things. I think, man, you already got a little run sheet in our head. But for everyone listening, I just want to shape the podcast so you can get your head around this one. Um, we'll talk footy. We'll talk transition. We'll talk life after footy. Um, and there's plenty of other things that will pop up. The glory days, mate. The when glory you, days, you, you yeah. And I, together. I know. Not many people realise how, you know, the footy factory, as we like to call it, the Calder Cannons footy factory, how cool our team was, and we'll dive right into that. But, mate, what's been happening? Give us the latest. Yeah, so, what is it? Probably eight, nearly six months out of footy, eight months out of footy, um, and that's all I've ever known for, for so long. So, a breath of fresh air, different challenges. Um, I've got a young family, two young kids now, um, which, uh, you know, mean the world to me, but... Just a different perspective on the world, mate. I'm um, absolutely loving it. Um, albeit some challenges, um, you know, in and around the, when footy started back in the early rounds, but no, thriving, mate. Enjoying it. A little bit disappointed I'm not in Europe with half of Melbourne. Um, you know, <laughs> the amount of photos we've been scrolling past, but now loving what I'm doing in business at the minute, mate, and, and watching my family grow up. It's great. It's great. I want to dive into that. Like, what is it that's the different perspective you talk about having a family? Because I haven't got one. Um, obviously, you've got a family, but I don't have kids. Yep. So what is it that changes exactly? Yeah, I think it's just priority um, and your, your thinking capacity, uh, especially when you're in the football world, it's all about yourself. And, you know, uh, holistically, footballers are quite selfish in the way that they live their life. So when you, um, you know, when you wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is how can you help your kids out, um, you just cha- it just changes you. Um, and I love it but it is full on um, and you just don't have that time in the day for your own think space um, and that's where it's important to work and get out of the family home in, in my um, point of view. But uh, no, I just love it. I love putting them first, seeing a smile on their faces. Um, my youngest has just started childcare, so that's another hurdle and challenge that my wife and I are facing. But I just love doing everything for them, mate, um, ensuring, that they, ensuring that they have a great day and go to bed happy and, and, and sleep well overnight, um, which is, again, another challenge in itself. But uh, I've always loved family. It's the most important thing in the world to me um, and to see them growing up. And, and my, uh, my, uh, my girl had her birthday party last weekend, which was fantastic. Um, you know, see a smile on her face and her growth is, is just something I'm so proud of. How old is she now? She's three. How was the party? The party was rocking. <laughs> no, but, uh, it, was at a, um, it was just at like a childcare. We booked out the place because I'm not having uh, toddlers run around my house and, and ruin the wall. So <laughs> outsource that kind of stuff. Uh, but she loved it. She loved it when we went up and spoke and had the, the speeches to say happy birthday. She was loving it. She was lapping it up. So definitely got that from her mum. <laughs> but uh, no, she's thriving, mate. She's thriving at a new childcare and and uh, things are progressing well in the Wells household. Oh, it's great. And how's the family, mate? As I just touched on, you're a, you're a wonderful man. You've got a beautiful family. Uh, everyone that knows you knows that. Um, and it's love. It's, you know, family first for everything. But um, yeah, how is the family? How's the old boy going? Yeah, the old boy. Uh, obviously had a fair bit to do with him um, back in the day, didn't you? Um, no, he's going really well. Uh, he's enjoying retired life. He's still, you know, me and him work together a, a little bit on different projects, but um, he's loving having a bit more time. He's gotten into his golf. Um, they put a golf simulator in his house, so he's there nice. every day, you know, banging out Dobby 18 Tyson, holes. where are you? We're having <laughs> yeah, to get some know. clutchies and just uh, yeah, bang some drives that's indoors. That's a, that's a nice pitch. But um, no, going well. Uh, Mum's just born to be a grandmother. She loves it. Um, she helps us out at the drop of a hat. Same with my sister, who's got three young ones now. And then my younger brother, Josh, who's engaged to, to Ruby, lovely Ruby. So... Yeah, things are things are growing, mate. It's it's, it's good. things happen so fast. You know, oh, you think what, what happened. You know, we're we're in school and then we're in footy and now we've got families and and in a minute, you know, Josh and Ruby may have a kid and then our family grows again. So uh, it's crazy, but we're you know we're really close family. Um, and it's great just to see development and 
and kids growing up and that's what we're all about. It's an elite, it's an elite family. You know what I mean? It's an elite, you guys have got an elite it's mindset. A a it's a bit of a cult, but no, no. <laughs> um, uh, again, but we, uh, we love sharing it with other people, but we do spend a lot of time together and love holidaying together, which is pretty special and something that we work really hard to, to foster. Nah, it's great as well said. Um, talking about the transition, how have you found it? And it's a, it's a great topic with players that are transitioning. There's a lot of people that listen to this that are still transitioning, um, that may have transitioned. They've gone through a tough time. Some might not find it tough, um, depending on the length of the career, I reckon. This is my opinion. But how have you found it and the challenges that it comes with um, You know, as you go into the working life? Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. And I, I like talking about it and delving into it um, because obviously you come away from footy with a lot of close relationships with players and and everyone has different circumstances when they leave the game. Um, some prepare a little bit and have some uh, other interests which they can pour some energy into while they're playing and others probably focus purely on football, which is again is not wrong. But then when the time's up and they don't have football anymore, they, they find themselves searching for, for opportunities. So um, I think the, the most important thing from my point of view was to have some building blocks before my career finished. Um, you know, I've, I've been in, in business and in industry since, you know, probably my early 20s um, doing study. Um, I've I'm, I'm done a, a, an accounting degree and halfway through an MBA at the moment. Um, and I've also worked in the finance sector um, and done some private investment and private equity. So I've done a few things and been exposed. So when I did leave, I had a little bit of skill. But I think that the biggest thing about transitioning is, is by the end of your football career, you're, you're very skilled, but some players don't know what those skills are. So I think one of the, the biggest things uh, or the most important things someone can do leaving the game is to do a CV on themselves. Now, a CV of, of the skills that you learn in football and what you can offer, you know, an employer or, or someone, you know, when you go looking for work. So um, if you go through, you know, I'll name a couple. Like, again, we'll talk about resilience later in the podcast, but that's something that I... I've learned through footy that is a really big skill and can be transferable into the workplace. So, so doing a CV um, post your career helps you transition into something that you are aligned to with your skills. Mm. But um, yeah, I think the biggest thing for mine is is the identity shift. Um, I've spoken about this before, but you know we spent 18 years before we get drafted trying to cultivate this identity of being an AFL footballer, and then once you're living in the environment, you try and protect that with all your might. And you know it's it's probably an ego thing to a point, but um, everything's about you. Every action, every decision you make is is in line with your football identity. We get into places that some others don't, and we get exposed to things. We go on good holidays. We get paid relatively well, um, and then when that's ripped away from you, um, there's a big battle between you letting go of that identity or wanting to hold onto it. Now, I believe that those players that that want to hold onto it don't really have anything else to, mm. to fall back on. So, you know, advice, if you call it, would be to try and shape that identity before you're, you're leaving the game and then let go as quickly as possible when you're finished the game because you don't want to keep reverting back and even the conversations we'll talk about. We're, we haven't talked a second about footy just yet, but when you're in that football identity, you want to bring footy straight into the conversation. You want to, you want to spend 90 to 100% of the conversation about footy because that's your comfort zone. But when you leave the game, you got to leave that identity with you and then start forming and feeding the energy into this new identity you want to create. Um, and again, it doesn't have to happen overnight, but you have to have some idea of the person you want to be perceived as and the industry you want to work in. So feeding that identity um, and, and helping that grow is really important in the transition to life after footy. It's well said. It, um, yeah, and it's you, 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 now that you've kind of broken down a few things, it is quite obvious when you kind of think of some people without naming them. Yeah. Just on the CV, like you, you speak about, you know, we're going to talk about resilience later on. There's one of many things that you could put down. One thing I find challenging, which you find you know interesting is because I'm pretty happy to be out there and carry on like a pork chop. But when you start to sit down with yourself and write down what you're good at, it, it sometimes is really challenging. Daunting, yeah. So how do you, how would someone sit down and actually filter through this CV and go, right, resilient? Um, you know, there's probably, there's what, what other examples are so there? So there's, there's time management. You know, we, we, we stuck to a calendar. We had to um, be diligent when, when we were training, where we were training, flying, um, decision-making under pressure. Obviously, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a Has anyone ever had the ball yeah. uh, <laughs> off turnover with <laughs> 10 seconds to go? And <laughs> but, but feedback, dealing with feedback, cycle of acceptance. There's all these things that we're exposed to. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, there's some confidence within all um, football clubs. You have someone that you rely on, that's your mentor, but sitting down with them, you need to sit down with someone is what we're trying to get yeah. at. You can't do it yourself because, again, it's a vulnerable thing. Like, you know, here you are, the person you want to be perceived as or the person that you think you are, um, trying to have the courage to do that is, is a big thing. So I, 
again, would sit down with our PDM. Um, Brent Prisma was a, is a great fella, um, been at the club for a long time, knows me in, inside out. You know, he's, he's the person you go to is, when things are going well, but yeah. more importantly, when things are, um, there's some struggles. So sitting down with that person to, to write these things down on a page. And I, I'm, a, I'm a writer, you know, I'm a, I take notes on, on all the, the important meetings because that's the way I learn, the way I retain. So it doesn't have to be on, on paper, but I think if you put it down, it's there, it's tangible and it's something that you can you can take away with you. So that's probably some advice from that. That's it's a good one. It is the PDM, the player development manager at um, all elite sporting clubs. Most of them have them and yep. it's important. What you're saying is it's really important for these players that are in it to actually build it out over time so yes. that they don't have to just go, oh my God, it's over and I now need a CV and oh my yeah. God, my yeah. head's bad. Yeah. So just yeah. sit down with them and, yeah. and and start building it out. We call it a CV. Like it's not really, it's it's your skills. It's yeah. your skills and what can you offer someone um, because you've got so much to offer. And until you delve into what you've been exposed to, what your experiences are and what your skills are, you don't know what you can offer. Mm. And then, and again, jumping ahead a little bit, when you know that, when you know what your strengths are. That was my next question. Yeah. So keep going. You have to, then get in an un- unfamiliar, uncomfortable environment and put yourself out there. Now, getting a seat at the table anywhere is really important, but putting yourself in environments that aren't affiliated with footy is probably the biggest challenge. Yeah. Post understanding what your strengths are, because you don't want to go to that table and then, you know, they throw a question at you and you feel like you can't answer it. But if you know what you're good at, you stay in your lane to a point of, you know, to a point, but you get at that, a seat at that table, get yourself out of your comfort zone and then start you know, throwing around things that you're familiar with. Again, not football, they're football related, but they're not directly linked with football. Then you start, you know, seeking out opportunities. And, and again, people, if you're a good person, will, will naturally fall in love with you and, and maybe an opportunity will, will come from it. But I think the more environments and the more tables that you sit at, the more people you talk to, like your fine self, you don't know what comes from it. So you've got to have an open mind and be curious to, to what can come from things. Did you have many players at the Dogs, including yourself, doing work experience while you were playing? I think there's a handful. Um, I, again, probably not enough. Um, and again, what's how much is too much, and then what's not enough. I, I, I feel that I was very diligent in, in spending my days off. I did an apprenticeship for a few years at a, at a finance company, a wealth management company in the city. But I don't think there was too many other people that the one had the capacity because football's again overwhelming. But even the, the courage to book that in and, and commit to it. So again, if I was a and put my PDM hat on, I'd, I'd make sure these things are, you know, whether you sign another contract to do work experience or something. So you're forced to, to get into a system that, that you keep repetitively building skills and doing it because, you know, it's like it's very easy on a, on a day off to be sore, a bit sorry for yourself. It's a hard week. Play PlayStation, fuck around, yeah. yeah. Which is important because you can. Um, you know, it's good to re- re- rejuvenate. Because some people are different and that's and what they need, need to perform. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not saying no, one, no, no, one we size get that. fits yeah, all, but yeah. I think the, the level of commitment within yourself to do that will pay its rewards by, uh, the, you know, the close of the curtains. It would make, career. yeah. Cause I, so one thing that I mean, I'm thinking about myself while we're talking is, cause I've always worked for myself, started this as soon as I finished, like start, let's go. I want to create this, yep. this beast that I've got this vision for, yep. but it's always daunted me thinking, right, if I was to just stop and go work for someone, yep. um, let's just say I've got the CV or my skills on a, on a, p- a piece of paper, I'd be very confident in maybe, um, sitting down with someone, but I wouldn't even know where to start. So my last question would be, where do you start? Like, is it a simple, hey, even me to you, hey, mate, do you know anyone that, you know, would maybe appreciate my skills? Like, where do you start? You start with your, and I don't love this word, but networks. Networks means that you're trying to get something from someone. I don't like that word, but your relationships within your, if you ask the curious question, oh, what are you into? If I ask you now, oh, so when you started, what was it? What was your dream? And you say, yeah, I had a similar one. And then there's a synergy and then there's a connection and it goes from there. I think the, the willingness to get to the table, now whatever it is, whether it's with your, your father-in-law, your mum, your dad, and ask the question, do you know someone who's in media? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't, but oh, my mate might. And then that's the curious mind where you just follow this rabbit hole until you find someone that you may have a synergy with. Now, again, that takes energy and that takes a little bit of courage to do that, but what you got to lose? You're right. And I, I don't think you've got anything to lose. The other other thing is, what if you don't know what you want to do? So I didn't know I wanted to do media. I, I knew I wanted to create this American sport, American Australian sports club that yeah. has an Australian voice to it. And we get the Aussie, you know, eventually we get American athletes talking to Aussie ex-athletes or athletes about just life and, oh, and just yeah. the, you know, obviously there's not much of it. So there's a, there's a huge vision. And I thought there's a gap and I'm like, let's do it. And off we go. Right. Yeah. But I had no idea that I wanted to do that till I had a lot of deep thought. It probably took me eight months of being out of the game, um, 
going through that transition, struggling with the no longer being the guy, the you know, identity. The, the identity crisis. Mate, you're still um, the guy. I had, <laughs> the, I had COVID, you know, like it was just a lot going on that yep. you're like, fucking hell, this is a really unique transition. Um, but yeah, what what's the advice if you've got any, if you don't know what you want to do, just, yeah. just trial a few things I, or? I think it's try, but I think what you have to, um, again, we talk about our skill. We'll keep referring to our CV sheet. There's the template for how you're going to be successful. Yeah. It doesn't matter where it is, but that's the template because that's your strengths. That's what you know. That's what you can give to someone. But then it's about trying to mold that to an industry. And that is the exploration. Mm. That's the, that's the, oh, wouldn't mind trying this. Let's talk about media. Let's talk about business, finance, accounting. They're all the industries, but you've got to mold your strengths and your skills to that. Now, the only way you're going to do that is. Yeah. Eight months of thought. That's why I love asking players. Because oh, like, there's no answer to that because I can't tell you what you like. Yeah. Now I can ask a question, do you like going out for dinner? We're, doing, we're working at a restaurant and you're like, not really. Well, okay, well then let's pivot. So mm. you just got to keep pivoting, ask the right questions and then just keep exploring. I'm thinking mate. there's a role here for you. No, you're a busy man, so you wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> AFL needs to employ you as the uh, the head of PDM for players that have passed players because I reckon oh. that's one thing that also, you don't have that anymore. Oh. Obviously, you've got great relationships. The Giants were amazing when I left and um, and then Freya Connections as well for myself. I'm sure the dogs as well as you spoke about. But there's no doubt that players feel a bit like, oh, I'm no longer in the club now. I won't yep. reach out to that person. I'll just use my network if I've got one and lucky yep. enough. So I reckon there's still, I mean, the AFL Players Association in terms of AFL here we're talking is there, but yeah, I reckon you'd be great at this. Yeah, so like, uh, and I'm a perfect example of someone who cut the cord. Like I, um, as soon as I finished, because uh, again, uh, this is me, I'm, I can talk about myself, but as soon as my time was up, it's it's not my time anymore. So yeah. again, the boys coming through and the, and the 44 players on the list, it's their time to, to take that role. So yeah. Um, an ongoing support person for most players is really important, but mm. it's something that I didn't really utilize because I had some mentors and some networks outside of football that I relied on. But, oh, mate, there's a, there's a big opportunity in that space. And, again, it's on the individual. You know what it's like. Yeah, like, it is. They offer these services. AFLPA have so many services. But if you're not inclined to ask a question or put your hand up and, and actually um, persevere and try and find something out of it, just falls away. You're spot on. They've yeah. got that many great services there. Yeah. You just need to pick the phone up and yeah. and even read what their services yeah. are. Like I remember one day I was chatting with, um, I think it was Louisa. She looks after the Sydney yeah. region. What is on, you know, like, <laughs> what you, know, the, you know the AFL. What, the, what does the website look like? <laughs> all, you, yeah, all you're caring about is how much coin we get. Yeah. <laughs> Not all we care, but um, when you finish, you go, all right, well, now that it's over. So what have I, okay, I've got to maybe get, like, oh, geez, I've got to go do that, that. Oh, you guys offer that? Wow, I didn't realize well, that. A big one was health insurance. Yes. Like I, um, yeah, I got no health insurance for a couple of months. I'm like, oh, private God. health. Yeah, private health. I didn't have it for nine months. There you go. Yeah. She goes, you haven't had it for You're nine right. months. <laughs> yeah. Well, lucky I was all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then they try to get me by backdating it. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I was healthy for those two <laughs> months. I don't. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's those things that again, being in again that football you identity, get babied for a lot yeah, of stuff. Dude, that identity of my things are going to happen for you. Yes. Um, but again, I think seeking, and we talk about how how do you make that leap? Well, you call the AFLPA and say, what what can I do? Who can I talk to? And that's the and they're great at that as well, mind you. Like as you said, it's the power's in your hands. Yeah, um, for sure. Well, we might as well talk about what you're doing now. I was going to yeah. talk about that at the end, but let's talk about it now. And that before we talk about the uh, the footy, you talk about cutting the cord. Bang! What are you doing with yourself? Yeah. So, um, in the last couple of seasons or years uh, towards the end of my career, we we created a family office. Um, my father and I, um, because. Steve and Sue, my mum and dad did quite well in the car industry. They sold out, so they had a fair bit of capital. Um, and we started exploring some some sort of private investments, um, a lot of them being passive. Um, but then the portfolio started growing, you know, started getting some property in there. Um, and as I was transitioning out, you know, there was it was a bit of scattergun to as where the where the money was and what what it is. So started sort of focalizing that to a point, um, and then sort of started controlling that which was great. So we've built that, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty robust portfolio at the minute that's going quite well, albeit the, the challenges of, of the global economy at the minute. But, um, you know, just recently within that family office, we started a, a, an active business, uh, Droneland AU, which is Droneland Australia. So all things drones, mate, which is exciting. Um, we launched that uh, about a month ago and we take over the factory in in early August. So Yeah, nice. Talk to me about yeah. this. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is really exciting. Uh Obviously, drones are massive around the world. Now, Australia's catching up, but we're, we're a fair way behind. So, 
um, you know, for future proofing what the industry is going to look like, it, it's going to be around. You know, there's already food deliveries in Ireland. You know, Macca's are doing deliveries. Um, there's man deliveries and Uber in drones now. Um, but I think the big space that we're going to explore is the agricultural space, which, we, we, you know, we spoke about um, farming a little bit before. Um, spraying, weeding and feeding, um, especially when these, you know, these winter months where the, the tractors can't get there or it's too boggy. Um, the efficiency of what a drone can do, uh, you know, is really fa- valuable to the farmer, but just efficient and and, and makes it good. So, look, I'm, I'm I'm really not that good at selling it yet. But oh, you're selling it to me, mate. I, I was thinking about me, you know, not, I don't eat you know McDonald's personally. I'm trying to eat healthy here, but like you know, maybe me Guzman Gomez yeah, dropping mate, a, oh, dropping off in the backyard, yeah. and now I'm thinking, oh, hang on, if you're a farmer, you're laughing as well. Yeah. So there's probably going to be two sides to it. There's going to be a tr- contracting side, which is Again, mainly around agricultural drones, which will be a lot, lot to do with the farming side of things, but also mapping. You know, obviously, um, we'd hope to get some government contracts with with mapping. You know, whether it's state forests or things, but then the selling of drones. So, you know, walking into a dealership like a car dealership, and you've got drone A to drone Z. You know, if you want a small mapping drone or a big, you know, agricultural drone, we can offer it and and provide a support service. That's probably the one thing that's lacking in the industry. You know, from our market analysis. Do, do you need to get a license to fly oh, yeah. the big puppies around? No, I was you, say, you can't have everyone oh, yeah. just flying these you things around. Yeah, you? you're a Boeing seven three seven, and then you're uh, a drone pilot. No, yeah. no, <laughs> yes, no, CAS is the, the governing body. Um, so our employees. I'm not a, a pilot, but most of our employees are. Um. But again, we're relatively new in this space, um, but I think the upside and the eagerness and the ambition that we have, uh, we want to be, you know, nationwide pretty soon. Man, that is exciting. Oh, it's funny, yeah. I've run in some, the, I'm living in an apartment complex at the moment and there's, you know, people that work in reception and, and, yeah. and one of the one of the guys there, he's a legend. And I go, <laughs> mate, you know, they expect me just to walk past, I love having yeah. a chat. And I go, what have you been up to, mate? And he goes, I'm actually um, getting me um, drone racing license. And I went, racing. I go, oh yeah. And he goes, mate, it's huge. <laughs> And I go, oh yeah, he goes, because he was going away on holiday and he be- he pulled at pins because he needs to do the license and all that. And yeah. he reckons there's, this drone racing is the next thing. And I I was thinking, oh yeah, so it's, it's just interesting, you know, pigeon racing when yeah, yeah, my, my pop was around, but he's no yeah. longer here. Like that's how, now it's drone racing. Yeah. I'm thinking, I don't know whether it'll take off or not, but I was like, well, mate, good luck. Let me know when you're in there and I'll uh, have a look. But Yeah, yeah well, that's a, the big thing. I just actually come from an insurance meeting because a lot of people want to fly drones, but they ended up invariably uh, crashing. So um, that's, the, I think the license comes into it and the liability, but mate, it's it's big. And the more questions you ask, the more people you ask, they, they think it's a great idea. But again, how you get a drone, what it can do, the capabilities of it, that's the, you know, the gap in the market that we want to be able to provide and, and be a real well-known, reputable sort of brand that people can rely on. I'll never forget, we had um, at Fremantle that we were sponsored by programmed in Woodside and yeah. Woodside had key, like keynote speakers come out who cleaned up that big oil spill. Do you remember yeah, the big yeah, oil yeah, spill? Yeah, yeah. And they were, they were just telling us about that because it was one of the biggest projects you had to do. It was one of the biggest fuck ups. And then they also, one of the you know biggest cleanups yep. for the environment. And um, I just never forget, they were talking about how special ops and, you know, all these people that you, you'd never know, they had, um, they had to do this meeting and, you know, it was that serious where everyone was in black suits and black black tie. I don't know what you call them. And, um, you know, and they go that you guys come in meeting, you had to have like someone with you. It was real serious, no cameras, all that. And then they offered them like a little, you know, uh, they, they go, come and look at what we've got in the back of this truck. And it was, this is 20 years ago and it was all the drones and all yeah, that. And yeah. he goes, what you're seeing now has actually been around for 20 years with especially like with all these private, you know, yeah, yeah, companies that help the government. And this yeah. is in America and whatnot. Um, and I always thought, far out, I wonder what like development they've made from there to now that they haven't told us about. Yeah, and now here we are talking about how big drones are going to be. They've probably been around for 10, oh, 15 no, years. Just- Someone's probably been doing what you're going to do and, yeah. So there's probably some naysayers out there going, oh, these guys are off their head. And then 15 years down the track, like, oh, hang on, hang here on. it is. Oh, they're commonplace. And now we got a dream, um, pivoting a little bit, to you walk into a farmer's shed and what a farmer has a tractor, he has a motorbike, he's got a mower, and then he's got a drone and he's got our drone. So that's, again, me being really ambitious, but I, I can see that because the importance and I've seen how effective and efficient they are. Um, I would just want that for people. Um, and. And yeah, like you said, 15 years ago, who would have thought, but then in 15 years, what's it going to be? Are right? we going to see people getting flown around in the air yes. like a helicopter? So they're 2024 wow. overseas. But like Ubers? Ubers. They're called Ubers, yeah. Uber drones. Uber, no, they're not. I don't think they're called Uber drones, but that's what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. So Ubers are global. Word, First thing everyone thinks about is the safety. Yeah. So, and that's the liability. So, um, 
again, if you're, you're in this industry, you've got a, a, the big part of it is a public liability and, and making sure that you've got insurances and, and your equipment's up to scratch. Like you're not going to manufacture a, a, a less than quality product that's, that's going to endanger anyone. So there's a bit of learning in that. We're a long way away from flying people. But who knows? You know, we've got the scope of the whole spectrum. And <laughs> I'm thinking if, about, if, if, if we do a podcast in five years we're and, we're, doing it. and we could do it in a drone, that'd be pretty fun. I was cool. just thinking like Stakes Day. You know, like yeah, I feel like, yeah. you know, Melbourne, we're talking about some key events um, the other day. And, uh, yeah, that Melbourne Cup Carnival, clearly not just Melbourne Cup, but Derby Day, Stakes Day, all that. I could just imagine Derby Day. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking now, imagine in 10 years we're all getting Ubers to the oh, track. Right. Oh, right. Sorry, drones, drones to the, to the track. track. Yeah, That would be just crazy. Oh, and that, I hope we are. Because that's why <laughs> yeah. I'm back. I'm back it in. So, well, mate, if you're backing it in, where do we? Where is, is this all? Is obviously all private. It's very private. Um, yeah. Are there many companies out there that are doing this stuff? Uh, they are, but not. I think we're we're trying to be different. Um, a lot a lot do contracting, some sell, but not the whole piece. Now there's there's people that do it across Australia, but it, they're just so small at the minute, and we want to be able to not leapfrog the market, but again provide a solution for everyone and grow quite quickly. Yeah, like by, by onboarding staff. Um, but again, offering a support system around the purchase, like, you know, when people dr- buy drones and in the past, they're not going to name any companies, but it's like you buy the drone and then it's your problem. But we want to be, uh, you know, a, a client, the clients rely on us to support, learn how to drive it. We can provide your license and if you need it fixed, we'll fix it. So they enjoy and get the most effective sort of product yeah, out of smart. it. Yeah, smart. You got the full service for them. Yeah. Customer yeah. service yeah. premium. Yeah. And, and again, this is probably a reflection of my, my old man's time in the car industry where they had... You know, you can come and buy a car, but we'll give you a latte, we'll get your service records, we'll do all this stuff, we'll make sure you get the repair, finance, all these 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 lines that you sort of, you tick off, and this is what we want to do in the drone world. It's actually interesting how your old man's coming from that, that you know, that world. Yep. It's a, it's going to be quite similar with, they're just different products, aren't just they? Products. So he's yeah, probably it's applying the same systems. Same principles. Yeah. yeah. So, and again, we're, we're so young still, like we haven't got the factory yet, but we're starting to build up the systems and some of the software behind um, what we're, what's going to take us into the future. Mate, I'm excited. I didn't yeah. think we'd be talking about this for so long. It's, uh, now that I've got my head around it, who, yeah. who would be your target audience straight away? Because we, we've got to put it out in the <laughs> universe right now. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm thinking about Harry Perryman, me mate, uh, uh, Giants. He's a big farmer and his family yeah. is. I'm just thinking about him. Yeah, um, even, you know, like I know they don't get some rain sometimes. They might be able to just filter all the rain across yeah. with the drones. Yeah, so, well, farmers generally, um, there's probably, there's two different types of of contracting you do from farmers. Now, spot spraying is where you spray for blackberries um, and things like that. And then broad acreage is where you weed and feed across a, a, a sort of more acres or, uh, you know, what have you. Um, but any farmer really. Now, we've got a property up in Queensland in Gympie. Um, and it's quite, you know, undulating and there's a really tall sort of hill that you can't access by motorbike or by horse. So a drone's the only way that you can make that fertilize. So there's an answer. There's a problem to the, uh, there's a solution to the problem. So all we need is one farmer in the, in the valley to buy one. Another farmer sees that they want the cool new toy. Uh, but again, it's effective and it's efficient for them. So, um, the marketing piece will be really interesting, but I think getting out there, getting in front of farmers, especially the, the ones that are staunch and sort of stuck in their ways, that'll be probably the biggest barrier for us um, to get in, you know, in front of them uh, and sell the product to them. And they'll be able to reduce a lot of costs, I would have thought. Yeah, a, a lot of costs. Um, you talk about a, a big tractor and then the efficiency of time. So, you know, what a tractor can do a 10 acre field yeah. over a couple of days, this can do it in, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So. There you go. Oh, I'm loving it. I need yeah. to see what else is in that asset management uh, <laughs> with you and the old boy. We're going to go over lunch. We're going to sit there all day and talk about uh, – is that is that kind of why? Because you just recently bought um, a farm. That's right? Yeah. So, so bought a farm up in – so we, we've bought and sold a couple in Victoria. Um, we've still got a, a longer sentiment on that. But I think the passion for that is cattle. Steve grew up on a, on a farm and it's it's one of his – you know, it's in his blood, so we've 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 hailed farms throughout. Um, but but uh, the you know the farming market within Victoria has absolutely taken off. So we we were getting out of that, and then hoping that the the farming market up in Queensland will do the same. But nah, to to his core, he's a, he's a farmer. Um, he's got his Akubra and his gum boots. Uh, <laughs> I've got it too, but mine are very clean. <laughs> I'm not one to get any mud on me. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, <laughs> mate. I'm, not for me. Yeah, Jez, but, Jez, I was speaking to Jezza Cameron last night. He's the one that would love that stuff. Oh, he'd get right into it. Yeah, he'd so, have the drones flying around his he, farm in Geelong, no he doubt. Would, he would. He would flying his premiership member. <laughs> yeah. Um No, nah, but there. Um, that's probably where the the drone it, that love for drones and the um, you know, this company sort of bred from was the farm and how can we make this better? How can we make it more efficient for the farmer? Um, and more more better for the cows, really. So. 
funny when you saw it at Cows. I remember playing with um, Sean Hurley. Is that he used to play at Freo for two years? An Irish lad. Yep. And um, as you know, we were, we were big on off field, so everyone had to do something off field. And the poor bastard, he was he was on like a international rookie contract. Yeah, yeah. He's he's probably making more money working in Ireland yeah. playing Gaelic for free, right? Yeah, and yeah. anyway, I remember him saying like. He's like, he's on the phone. And he's all flustered. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm trying to sell me cow. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's like, I need to sell any more money. And he had all these, he had all these cows. So when I went and visited him, yeah. saw the cows. Like, man, that one's four grand. Like, you know, and I was brilliant, like, mate. wow. He's, and he's just like, yeah, mate. Like, my investments almost cow, half it's cows, half cash. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, it's crazy because again, I'm not going to act like I know a lot about it. I know that I do the books for a couple of, of farms, so I know you know the expenses and and the income, but. Um, yeah, the, the value of meat within Australia, we're, we're a hungry bunch and, um, you know, the export market is huge too. So the value in a cow and, and farmers now are really smart. That's why they want to invest in having good crops because they get, they get better value, uh, when mm-hmm. they're growing that, growing their cattle. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a booming industry, um, and something that's really grown over time. Like, you know, farmers used to fall in love with their farm, but often be stereotyped as being a little bit lazy, a little bit easy going, but now they're, you know, they're into the cutting edge technology to, to progress their farm, to progress their herd, to buy bigger blocks, which is which is great for Australia um, and great if you're, if you're a farmer as well. Mm. Well said. There you go. Let's do a whole other podcast on farming. <laughs> Sorry, mate. We're getting- Don't, don't really apologize. Just, I'm loving this. This is heavy, but- No, this is this is great. It's great to see you thriving as well. You know, as I said, we just talked about transition. You've yeah. cut it off and gone into this stuff. Yeah. Now, um- not everyone can just do that, but geez, you're doing well. It's uh, it's yeah. it's awesome to see, mate. I love it. Oh, but I, I think yeah, and whether you, I'm not saying I fabricated it, but you have to believe that you're, you're going well too. Because look, there hasn't I'm, we haven't really spoken about how hard it's been because I've I've been proactive and, and positive, but there has been some challenges within that. Now wrestling with the identity bit, she's probably still come to terms with that a little bit. You know, it'll be interesting come finals time and and when everyone's sort of. Have off having holidays and I'm still working. That'll, that'll be an interesting thing to digest. Um, but I, I think that if you, you've nearly got to fabricate it a little bit to try and get your, your energy going. It's like any game that you've ever played in where it's flat and the, the only way that you, you get the boys up is you fabricate, you you know, you're encouraged, but really you're feeling flat. But yeah. you, you just got to find something, oh. don't you? And so this is a little bit similar with your, your energy and your, your um you know, your, your transition, you've got to find that, that energy and fabricating it might be the way well, that you start. We're probably in the same boat. You're probably more from that leadership angle. I'm probably more from that energy and getting around the boys. Yeah, yeah, but sure. they don't realise that y- you're having a down day, but <laughs> it just stands out like dog's balls if you are. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? I always yeah. say that the boys, I go, it's hard for me to have a real down one because you'll yeah. just think I'm having a shocker because yeah, yeah. I'm not popping around. Oh, and-, and if you set your precedent yeah. to a house and, it, and you've, you've been the bubble of energy forever. And if you're a little bit off- Oh, everyone knows. Everyone knows and you can't hide it. And I was a little bit the same because again, parochial, loud. Mate, I had a bad night's sleep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, my kids kept me up all night. But, <laughs> um, but again, that's what you're, you're buying to and you commit to that. You exactly. Know, you right. live and die by the sword. I'd rather live on the edge. Of yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. Before we go into the um, the footy, are you an American sports fan? I haven't even asked yes, you. Yes, no, I am. What's the NFL, NBA, so a bit of everything? I, I love NBA. I love watching the NBA. I um, you know, watch the finals with a, a great deal of interest um, and love NFL, but I love NFL from afar. Like, I like watching good games. I know, you know, good players. Um, but uh, again, I've got a dream to go to the Super Bowl. That's probably the, you know, and the golf. The, I love golf. So, um, going to Augusta and then going to the Super Bowl are two of my bucket lists. Yeah, um, oh, well, mate, we could go together. Yeah, There's a few well, of us. So I haven't done it yet. And yeah. I don't think I'll be doing it next year. I've got a wedding. My good mate's getting married on the Saturday. Yeah. I was thinking Vegas. It's going to stretch me, but I'd love to get there for that. Well, that's gone now. So it's going to be another, another year. year. I've got to wait. Yeah. Oh, but we just book it. We're just going to book it in. This is one of those things. Big crew as well. Six months out. We'll do a podcast over there, claim all the expenses. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, you can run the wealth <laughs> management side. I'll do the, I'll do the networking yeah. and the sales. No, nah, but I, oh, Mate, it's just one of those things that the Americans do it well, don't they? Oh. Um, look, we do a grand final well, and um, we do definitely some sporting events well here in Victoria, but it's just another level and the excitement and the build up and being there. I just want to fall into a fan zone and just yeah. be a fan for oh, a day. And just, yeah, you don't, yeah, it'd be crazy. Well, while we're on it, mate, we're, um, we've got to see our friends here uh, from Sports Where I Am. They're amazing. Um, yeah. I'll tell you a bit more about them in a second. That's yours. You got a 250 oh. buck voucher. If you do go overseas with the fam soon, Fantastic. I've got a little game to play with you. We've been playing this one. I've taken out, That's I think great. I've taken out um the last few. What I want you to do is shuffle them around and pick one of them upside, pick one of them, and then I'll uh, tell you what to do next. So do I look at it? Uh, just one of them, yeah. 
Beautiful. Okay, what's it say? Houston. Houston. Wow, there you go. I put in Houston. Um, big shout out to Jock Landale. The great man's just got the big contract. Mate, on there, there's a few options of sporting events. Yep. Sports where I am uh, an Australian business. There are um, some good lads down here that uh, that are supporting the Oz American Aces. And essentially, if you want to book your tickets when you're going to America now and you're in a, a town, you just sports where I am, bang, online, premium really? tickets, Australian customer service. Oh. That's fantastic. Amazing. Um, and they're doing great things. So all these sports on that card are, are, are services in Houston. So what's yep. if you were to pick one of the few there, you could read a few out, which would be the one that you'd take the family with? So I can narrow it down to three quite quickly. And it'll be the Rockets, the Astros, or the Texans. So um, again, I've been to um, San Fran and gone to the baseball, but that's probably about my exposure to baseball. But I know how crazy the Houston fans are uh, with it. Uh, MLB. They go well when the, the Astros are always around. They're always the, um, there, thereabouts. But I think it'll have to be um, the Texans. Yeah. Because, yeah. again, that, they do it well. But I love the build up to an NFL game. You know, went to a, what do you call the rally before it? Yeah, the um, um, tailgate. Tailgate. I've had that experience when I was younger. Um, went and saw the Texas Longhorns, which was incredible. Well, college does it better. College does it better. You can't drink in the stadium. No, you can't. You can't. Yeah. So. But I, yeah, I found out that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, I'm at half time um, and, and yawning. Um, but yeah, mate, the, probably the Texans is probably my go. But there you go. That's great. Yeah, no, well, there you go, mate. mate. 250 buck voucher from Sports Where I Am. And if anyone else wants to, um, or is going overseas, head online at sportswhereiam.com and uh, and grab yourself uh, a few tickets and use our discount code ACES. Uh, you'll get a 10% uh, discount, which is doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're booking for, you know, five crew. events and a yep. big crew, uh, it's a fair bit. So there you awesome. go, mate. Have you, uh, Houston, we haven't had Houston. Nah, oh, fantastic. Yeah, mate, let's get into footy. I've got heaps of questions, but um, we'll start with, uh, I guess, juniors, you know, um, St. Kevin's, uh, especially as a youngster um, going through private school and then Colder Cannon's days, our glory days. But glory started, days. Me, started me with private school footy. I don't think I've asked many people. I never really experienced it besides watching maybe an Assumption Pegs, seeing videos online now of um, when you see young kids coming yeah. through. What is it that's so special about the group of lads that you play footy with at private school footy. Yeah, it's, mate, it's a fascinating thing. And I, I was lucky enough to be able to present um, some jumpers to the first 18 this year uh, for St. Kevin's. And it's bring, it brings back so much memories and nostalgia of the time I spent there because this season, I think it's only nine or 10 games long. So every game is the pinnacle. And the way that the system runs is at the end of the day, there's no grand final. It's wins or losses and who beat who. So, you can be seven and three and, you know, second or later seven and three, but if you beat them, you win. So it's a grand final every week. So the games are built up. That's great. Yeah. So it's, it's great. It's got a good, it's a great platform for, for memories. But I think as you walk in there as a, you know, year seven, a 12 year old prepubescent for, in my case, um, you know, you look up at these 18 year olds in the first and go, mate, when am I ever going to get there? You know, <laughs> they are my idols and they're just a school footy team, but you spend every day with each other, you know, at St. Kevin's and, across the APS schools and, and private schools. Yeah, they really value schooling um, and education. And then the lucky bit is playing footy together. So you get that right. You work hard from, you know, your nine to three every day and then you get to play footy on the weekend. And and that just grows. And every year it gets bigger and bigger and more important and more pit on the pinnacle. And then you play for the first 18 and your school colours with, you know, year sevens watching you. Because it's like a little bit like the the AFL system where, you know, you've got young kids who idolise you. Year sevens idolise the year 12s. So. Well, it's got a bit of an American college vibe to it, it doesn't does, it? It does. And, and it is. And, you know, you talk about people drafted from that system. It, it's an elite sort of system. And, you know, when I started um, in year seven, only teachers were coaches. And then by the end, you know, you had some outside Steve Wallace came in and coached me. <laughs> but um, you be, they started putting a little bit more um, structure around the, the football program and, you know, led to some more success. So it's just a really good formula, one for enjoyment, but passion, you know, some of these things that just what make footy clubs, you know, yeah. tick. Oh. Um, and, and the nostalgia of, of playing with your best mates on the weekend. Um, for, again, only for 10 games. So you've got to make the most yeah, of every sure. game. Um, and then, you know, you're done. And then once you, you finish, you look back and – Mate, if another St. Kevin's boat came in here, we'd talk about school footy. And I actually, I was speaking in, at the club last year and there was a couple of St. Kevin's, Riley West went to St. Kevin's, you know, Lockie Hunter when he was playing for the Dogs. We're talking about school footy and those who haven't been ordained in the, the private school system go, school footy, we didn't even play. And it's like, they just don't understand this connection, this importance of what school footy was for us. 
No, you, yeah, well, I'm, and I'm one of them. I mean, yeah, we yeah. played a couple of games and you got yeah, some fun, I guess, a couple, of games, couple yeah. games and you might have had a good little win there, but yeah. there's nothing, um, nothing like it. No. And you wouldn't understand it. And you do, you hear people talk and you just want to be involved, but yeah. you're like, I don't understand what you folks are on about, yeah. you know? And, and probably I was, now that I'm old as shit, um, I was, <laughs> I was predating the social media. So, you know, back when we were coming up, there probably, you know, on some forums there was, but now, like with, you know, Instagram and Facebook, there's reports, there's players, there's who's tagging who, who's beating who, who's getting the touches. So there's a lot more information available for players. Again, the pressure stakes are, are raised, but again, the the passion is raised as well. Well, the pressure for you and Libba, we'll talk about in a second, was huge already. So I can only imagine social media. You folks yeah. would have been, there's people that are tracking these games. You boys would have been having 40 every yeah. week, you know. It's oh. um, it's uh, it's impressive. Back to year seven, who was someone that you idolized just so I can think of someone? You know, yeah. when you, you look up, it doesn't have to be someone that went on, but there's, there's someone that just comes front of mind. Oh, well, well Juddy was playing. When, oh, really? Yeah, so Juddy was playing when I was, I think it was, I was year five or six, but I saw him play for Caulfield. Like these players are just... You know, when you're that young playing school footy and then they go on to have the careers they have. But I'll actually I'll pivot a bit here because this is not my footy idols, but Vance Joy. Yeah. Yeah. He was in year 12 when I was in year seven. Wow. So he played first eight in footy. And so it's an elite culture. <laughs> <laughs> it's an on and off. <laughs> and I'm spruiking about me, uh, <laughs> me schooling. Oh, but, oh, mate, it just anyone, anyone, who's whoever's the best, like play with um, oh, Jared Kasher was um, one that was a year above me that played um, obviously uh, footy um, at, at the highest level. I mean, who are other players that I look up? We didn't have a lot at St. Kevin's um, when I was in year seven. Like we didn't, but when then we brought into success, um, you know, we were one of those those schools that never poaching, never, um, never poached, never gave scholarships <laughs> out. But by the end of it, when you get a taste, mate, it's hard, to, it's hard to stop. Steve Wallace comes in. All right, we need five new recruits <laughs> yeah, and, a, and a robust assistant staff. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, mate, glory days of school. Actually, quarter cannons again. We'll, we'll, yeah, well, that was kind of like where yeah, it tied the segue, in. Yeah. yeah, the segue. I mean. Um, but while we're on school, the, the when you walk out and you've got everyone watching you, that's what I would have loved because yeah. when I was going through school, everyone's like, what do you mean you want to be a footballer? They probably didn't understand Cannons and Vic Metro and the yep. commitments and why aren't you coming to this party? And it's like, oh, I've got footy. Like, oh, footy, mate. We've all got footy. It's like, nah, yeah. it's a bit different, but, but I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. But at least with you boys, you go out and the crowd's set, the yeah. stage is set. You're like these gladiators. You go out, you generally win because the winning culture yeah. and you walk off, everyone knows what's happened and then, you know, off you go, school again on Monday. So yeah. it must be something special mate, it's so special and again look about the detail so we all had to dress up in our blazers and uniforms so it felt official you know you got a little insignia if you play for the first 18 so some of these again a little bit materialistic but some of these things that you did pent up this emotion again around footy and then post the game we'd have a um, both clubs both schools would come and we'd go up and have a, an afternoon tea and the, the captains would do their speech they'd thank the umpires I'd give her the best player award. So again, this this whole structure of the football program in the APS was one that was elite, which was cool as an eighteen year old because you, you know, you you're playing school footy, but then you've got supporters and you've got a, a system, and then you you know you got to you got to dress well. Like there's so many different the elements. Transition to AFL would be easier, I'd imagine. Uh, a little bit of, like, oh, I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, but it feels elite, and I think again you buy into it. Um, but that's where the passion comes from because winning. And that feeling that you get with your boys, which again, don't have to explain what it feels like to you, but is the epitome of, of why yeah, you're playing. That's great. Yeah. How did you balance Colter Cannons? I know that when we were playing, uh, we're going to talk about our glory days, but oh, you know, we all looked up to you and Libba and Dion and oh, geez, I could name heaps, Cam Guthrie. There's, I've probably left out some here, so shoot me. But um, but like when we were younger, it was always, especially my bottom age year when we had that successful year together. Um, I think we finished seventh in the finals and then, but then we got all our private school boys back and like, I mean, we should name them. There was probably you, Libba, Luke Mitchell, yep. um, Dion Prestia. Matt Watson was, he was. Matt Watson from Pegs. You had Mick Italia. Italia. I think there was probably a couple more that I'm missing out here. Yeah. Kef and all these guys. Anyway, there's all these guys that come back and it was like, you know, now I look at it, I'm like, it's an AFL starting midfield. Yeah. It, it was incredible. Yeah, it but was. like, how was that for you guys to come back to Colder Cannons yep. just for the pretty much the peak season, the yeah, finals? Uh, again, very lucky. Like, very fortunate that we did the preseason together. So there's enough respect there, and I think that was probably be the biggest challenging things for Tac Cup. And then it's not Tac, what's it called NAB League, NAB League at, now, at the minute. Yeah is the commitment issue. Like, are you giving your all when you come back here, especially when players are playing states and, and are you just, just trying to get enough kicks? So you, what do you, what, like, where, where's your motive? Um, but you know, Libra and I were very lucky. May 30th, I still remember it. We got told that we were going to get taken, um, 
in the draft. So we had, we could focus on our schooling, we could focus on our footy and enjoy it. So we, again, adopted this mindset, nah, let's win a flag. The more more games we win, if we win a flag, if we play in a grand final, more kids are going to get drafted. We're going to play more footy, but we're going to have more fun. So we had a little little bit of a, an extra motivation to just put the self, um, you know, self awards aside and try and help everyone else. And that's sort of, and again, the, the best story is, can you remember talking about the TAB odds? Nah. So we're coming in seventh and we lost to probably like the bottom side in the round before we all come back and we're forty one dollars or whatever to Were we? Yeah. And then overnight into four dollars. <laughs> Cause all the boys come back. Wow. <laughs> overnight into four and some would have got wind. Yeah. Because we had a good list. Like we yeah. would have had nine or something in the in the state eighteen team. But yeah, I don't know. Again, probably <laughs> going on record. It shouldn't, it's not great, but yeah. No, we're, it just gives insight to like 41 into fours shows you the the cattle that come back yeah. to play. I guess the market didn't know. We probably didn't no. know either if you guys are going to play because you got the contracts. Um, and, But yeah, mate, it was- And then bang. Bang. And, oh. then, and then we were sort of, again, all we had to do was keep winning, but we were winning and winning well. And then we ended up winning the flag by- well, there's a game there, and this is kind of like us just talking about the glory days, but Colter Cannons played Dan Long Stingrays. I remember Tom Lynch was playing. Um, there was, I think it might be Luke Parker as well, and they yeah. got the better of us. And you got, it might have been your first game back, and we were down by like a substantial amount of points, 30 points, and then three-quarter time was still down. And then all of a sudden, in comes the big four. I think all you boys just got to work. We ended up winning. A yeah. few people played different positions. Yeah. Um, and that was the start. And then we ended up going all the way through the granny. I think Dyson Heppel and Jed Lamb were the two superstars. Yeah. Um, I know you're not allowed to tag, but Cam Guthrie yeah, was Cam certainly Guthrie. tagging him that day. Yeah. We'll put it on the record. I he was running he, with him. I think he had 45 or something the week before. Yeah. And then, yeah, then had no help. I think he had a laugh at Dice on here about it. He's like, yeah, you're not allowed to tag, but I can give you the tip. <laughs> he was wearing <laughs> me like a glove. Yeah. It was very fond of me. Yeah. Uh, but what, what the, one of the best memories was the uh, the parties at yours. I remember oh, like, I still go. owe your mum a massive apology. Yeah. Oh, mate, I might take it over for a bit. <laughs> uh, so we've got a young Tommy Sheridan, very impressionable. <laughs> 16 year old, were you 16 then? Would have been 16, 16 still, yeah. 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 Um, and family, mum and dad, very, very <laughs> gracious in having all the boys over for a Mad Monday celebration. And um, by repaying that, you know, that gracious sort of gesture of, of hosting the house, Tom proceeded to uh, vomit. What was it, pink? Oh, was it pink? Like red Cruiser. Red Cruiser. That was his drink of choice. So he had two and was tipsy. <laughs> and then uh, he proceeded to wreck my spare bedroom and then walk along the, the hallways with handprints and. And uh, yeah, that was. Oh, then you're doing me. You're doing me like light here. It was yeah, worse well, than that. Yeah, it was worse than that. But then you know, I'm, and I'm as I'm doing this, I'm introducing you to my mum. You know, this is Tom. He's normally better than this. But <laughs> oh, mate, they're fun. That was. Fun. I look back and it's funny. I mean, it wouldn't be funny for your mum. But I remember um, we we're playing beer pong and yeah. I, I didn't drink so. Cruises, they taste like lolly water. And I mean, I had, I had as many as I could as a skinny 16 year old, <laughs> which never drank. So it was like yeah. a time to celebrate. And but what was even more rare was. For some reason, your mum was throwing out all these clothes oh, and we all dressed up in these clothes. So I'm rocking her nice white dress. Like oh, I, I think I was dressed. Everyone's like, let's dress up. So I've got your I've got your mum's dress on a fan in the garage, which is probably a nice dress. But you said, no, no, put it on, it's going to waste. Um and then I didn't um, know if it was going to waste. I, was, I remember you, because I remember you did that, but I remember Mikatali was in this thing that Mika's like, come on, man, put it on. I'm like, all right, I'll put it on. And then it was this ripped and oh, and that that was a little bit embarrassing. That but, was embarrassing. But again, I think everyone was so happy and mum. We, we yeah, were carrying she, on. 40, she sat me down after. Yeah, yeah she would have. There's 40 <laughs> blokes, and I think I sat myself down. And um, and I didn't, I didn't drink. So like, my no. old man got the call. Like, your son's almost dying. He's, <laughs> he's vomiting in his sleep. Like he was. I was mad. I was the sickest I've ever been. Yeah. So he's picking me up, and I'll never forget. He's picked me up. I, I'm at the point where I'm just vomiting and vomiting. Nothing. I'm in the shower, and um, you guys are amazing. It was like I was in, you know, just first class treatment while me while my old man come from Riddles Creek because yeah. he got the call. They're like, yeah, I'll be there in 45. <laughs> Anyway, I remember getting picking me up and I got the head in the bucket and we're driving past like, um, you know, like, uh, is it, yeah, Killer Road yeah. and Mount Alexander Road. There's like a big roundabout and I just saw like 35 blokes just walking and yeah. then dad's like, there's a the boys and I'm like in the, bu- <laughs> in the yeah. bucket. Oh, I'm thinking that is the most embarrassing moment probably still of me yeah. footy career, just but, going around to yours for the first time. And but I think the best thing, <laughs> like we created that culture that everyone came yeah. and and that was just something to fall out of it, but you were protected. And again, that was, I, I tapped my hat off to mum and dad for allowing us to do that in the, you know, the safety confines of our home. But we just had a culture that we all wanted to be together mm. and, and win together was, you remember the um, blood, not blood brothers, what was it? Um, brotherhood, something brotherhood, yeah. uh, oh. whatever it was. But uh, we've really bought into that. 
and and we you know we played together, we won together, and then we celebrated together, which is the oh, it was just such a tight group. Like even as I said, now you run into a mate that you played with, and it's hard. Like as you get older, you don't get to see each other, um, especially if you do go on and play or you don't. You know, you're living in different states. Yep. Um, but when you do catch up, that I mean, I'm sure everyone out there that's won because we went on and won the the flag as well. It's it's just something that you're so proud of, yeah. and you don't realise how hard it is probably until you reflect. Yeah. And as you said, once you hang the boots up, you're like, oh, what have I? Oh, well, that was one of the things that like you yeah. stands out. It's yeah, like that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah sure. So um, again, apology to your um, to your family for uh, just embarrassing yeah, themselves. Um, right? <laughs> and yeah, I should go get some new bed sheets or something. <laughs> yeah, after. No, but uh, great times, mate. No, and no, um, so yeah, you, so you, I didn't know that. So you told that you're going to get picked up and you're still going on because there's a chance of getting injured. Yeah, and all that stuff. But we were, that's what I'm saying, we committed to playing and we enjoyed playing so much um, with you boys. Sums up you guys, really, to be honest. Yeah. Like it's, um, it, it's, my, it's- My draft camp pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, just lying through my teeth. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going? No, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's what I think. Can you ever lie? They're the perfect lies. You just like, it's a harmless so, lie. Again, and I, I don't want to sound like I'm the righteous one, but I, I was just spruiking about all you boys. I was just spruiking about all the teammates. And, and again, it was a good experience. The one that I didn't want to miss out on either. Because it's, again, that's fun. You see all the other elite 18 year olds there. You see all the big dogs, the coaches. Like, it's your first exposure to. Yeah. You know the elite world must so. have been nice just knowing you got the uh, insurance. You're like, oh, I'm already taken without anyone knowing. It must have been a hard secret to, to hold yeah. on to. Oh, I, I th- yeah, but everyone kind of knew. I though, think it but- was it was documented pretty well, and that we'll actually post that. And I think there might have been one more draft, and they changed all the rules with the um, the waiting and the points and stuff because um, everyone felt sort of a little bit hard done by. I think, but um, yeah, it was mate, it was hard to keep the secret, but it wasn't hard because it was. It was pretty much a, a, a foregone sort yeah. of, yeah, what was going Let's talk about you and Libba, complete different beast when you're like, <laughs> what, you know, just, you don't have to be Einstein to work out, but like different beast, but yet went together, you know, you were together oh, for uh, how long? Like how special was your relationship with Libba? Yeah, special, mate. And again, it's one of those upon reflection ones that you, you really understand and dig deep to, to how special it was. Um, we spent so much time, we... You know, there's only a handful of games that we didn't play together in juniors, um, or well, even in seniors, because um, again, injuries and stuff aside. But um, yeah, special, same schools, um, all the same teams, and then drafted the same year, same club. Um, the exposure we got as 14, 15, 16 year olds at, at the Dogs, like we went and did waterboarding for a summer. Um, we got to, you know, do a few drills as a 16 year old. Like, just some of these things, which again, looking back with a Best things in the world. And you, know, you can imagine me telling my mates that I just did a training session with Scotty West and oh, stuff. Amazing. Like it's, yeah. it's crazy. So um, real special, but we were just on this journey and this things gathering momentum and then the thought of drafts start entering when you, you make the call to Cannon's team under 16s and there's a state carnival, you know, it's a possibility, but then you want to keep growing and you just keep riding these bumps and these journeys. And then, yeah, mate, it's a, the dogs together um, in the same draft. And I still remember my draft night. We were um, on Hurt Camp. So we were already, again, we were in early because the father-son draft was before the draft and I don't ever get to get my, hear my name get called out or, so we were, uh, we were carrying around a hundred kilo rope oh, wow. around the mountains. So again, that's another memory of, yeah. of what we went through, but yeah. And as we probably progressed, we are two different beasts, you know, what makes him tick is probably not what makes me tick, but you know, we'll always have that respect of how important we were together. Um, you know, our friendship from it, from an early age. Um, and I must admit, we sort of went that way with, with our friendship and then we sort of come back. But And that's just through natural progression of, of life and, you know, me having a family now and, and getting married and, and, and putting more time into into my family. Yeah, well said, mate. And it is. It's, um like you said, two different beasts. But to go through all of that journey, oh, and there's special. a lot of media attention as well, and um, you guys handled yourselves with class. So yeah. it's being good. Being able to-, to do that with someone, though, is probably what helped too. Yeah. Exactly right. That's yeah. what's so special. Um, let's go through your footy. I, I kind of want you to... I want you to summarize it in it, like just briefly from your eyes, you know, if you were to sum up from the start to the end, and then I'm going to dive into a couple of things just for yep. those listening that aren't familiar with your career. Yeah. So, um, drafted again, 2010. So first year was 2011. Um, started off pretty well. Like I, I think I, you know, I was in the top few, top five or top four in the best of fairest my second year, but dogs weren't going that well. Um, and then, um, as my year progressed, as my, my career progressed, you know, we started to get better. You know, that whole sort of Luke Bedbridge um, coming on board and losing Griff and, you know, the, the club was in turmoil. So I rode some of the really hard challenges in that, you know, and, and Brendan McCartney cops his wax here and there for, for the way that he ended up. But 
still think that he laid some really strong foundations to, to why we were successful during the you know the, the grand final period and and thereafter. But and then sort of the height of the career was through the the early stages of when Bevo took over and, and I was probably at my peak of my powers from a playing point of view. Um, and then obviously the, a big big leg injury uh, put a halt to a lot of things. Um, you know, with a question mark on whether I was going to be able to come back or not. Um, and then post that, you know, defied the odds to a point, but um, found some struggles again. Signed a, uh, you know, probably the biggest contract that I signed in my career um, in 2018 when there was a, a decision to either leave or stay um, because there was, you know, not there were some issues from, from I think I got drops in, in that period of time um, before I started playing some really good consistent footy. Um, but the opportunities were there and I didn't explore them. And to be totally honest, I've never said this on air, but, um, you know, I had to probably pursued a, uh, you know, a, a contract elsewhere. It might have been the best decision for my footballing career um, in terms of longevity and, and playing games, but um, in terms of life and, and family and football and the, you know, the love and loyalty for the club, it was the, it was the right decision at the time. Um, and then, yeah, sort of journeyed and 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 changed roles within that. Became a forward uh, out of necessity uh, and want to play in the team and and had a pretty good season. And then became vice captain and then was on the way out. Um, you know, sort of post that. Uh, that assignment. So, um, loved my footy career. Would change a lot of things. <laughs> you know, people say wouldn't change a thing. I've changed many things, but um, you know, the memories and the and the foundations that are, are, are laid for the rest of my life, and some of the relationships that I walk away with, uh, are some of the most important things that I hold dear to me. Mate, I appreciate you um, being so open and honest and, and breaking that down because I obviously have broken it down as well. But I've just picked up a couple of things. Um, what would you change differently? Um, I was, a, I was a bit of a head case when I started and I put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, you know, again, it's, it's what's needed, but um, in terms of diet, um, sleep, training, I overtrained a lot and overthought a lot. So I, I probably um, took things to the extreme too much to my detriment and got injured for overtraining. So I think, you you know, you ask for advice, but until you fall on your own sword, um, it's the only advice that you'll take is your own when you get hurt. So I changed that a little bit and changed the way I apply applied myself would be a lot smarter rather than harder, um, mm. which again is a, a bit of a throwaway line, but but it's real. Um, and then just hopefully gain a little bit more perspective earlier on in my career. Like it was the epitome playing um, and then it took to, um, you know, missing out on the grand final in 2016 to realise that life's a little bit more important and instead of banging on things like, you know, best of fairest results in grand finals and, and the like, I um. I started putting my main motivation is to creating memories and memories in and around playing, not just playing. So, you know, you're, when you sit back in 10 years and you talk about the pre-season camp where we went and, you know, we didn't eat or we, whatever we did, they're the memories that I'll take away and the friendships and the formations that I started to value more than just the, the winning and the, and the playing well. Um, now, that may have been out of necessity, but I think I wanted to walk away with memories and a robust excitement about, some of the cool things we did rather than whether we won a flag or not. Mm, mm. No, it's great. It's well said. And a lot of people are like that. Even at a younger age, it's like at 12 and 13, they're yeah. just taking it way too seriously. And yeah. you're like, it's good, but yeah, there's more to and there's it. And there's a balance because you don't want to ever tell a young kid to, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You have to learn, but the balance, the quicker you learn the balance, and unfortunately, like I said before, it's when you fall on your own sword is when you actually find that balance. Which is life. That's why I love talking to old guys because they're so wise. And they're <laughs> yeah. just, uh, yeah, they don't really talk much. They're yeah. just, just straight as an arrow and it's, yeah. um, it's because they've gone through it. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Back to exploring. So you said, and, and this is a testament to you, your loyalty. Uh, you didn't explore, but it, but if you did, let I'll, I'll be, I'll just, you'll be still playing in my opinion and I'll tell you why in a second. You'll be still playing. So when you say you didn't explore because you're so loyal um, clearly you become vice captain not long after. So it's like, yep. you, you probably got things like I'm, I'm the leader of this club or the second in charge. Um, the players look up to me clearly. Um, when you say you didn't explore, was your manager calling you and you're like, nah, I don't want to be anywhere else. Just get the deal done. Um, I th look, I, I was happy with where the dogs are at and, and, you know, they came to the table with the contract, um, that was, I saw that was sufficient enough. Um, How many years was it? Just so I know, it was, it was three years at three Dogs. Years. So yeah. nice little, yeah, yeah, and and that was enough. Like I, again, I'm not the I'm not the star player. Like and I, I always, again, towards the latter end of the year, you let that go and you say, okay, this is my role in the team. This is my capacity. Yes, I'm I'm self confident and I know I'm, I'm, I deserve to play every week and I can be the you know in the best players. But you're not 
I'm not the full forward. I'm not the Marcus Montepelli of the world. I'm yeah, not Bond that. comes in. Okay, well, maybe he is. I'll go play half. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. So, And I again, it takes time, but you, when you realise that, you let go a little bit. Um, but I think, again, for for playing consistency, for a little bit of curiosity and what my limitations are, you know, because the coaches had a, had a fair view of what my limitations were, that was the- That's the, what pisses me off. Yeah. Once they label you, they right. don't ever change, even though you're changing right. and you're deli- you're going out there and working on your craft, yeah. they'll still go back and wait for one mistake and go, there it is. Yep. And again, the, the, you know, the certain players that are dispensable to clubs that, again, are, are loyal, um, put in the hard work, train the hardest. Again, they, they're the ones that you can push around a little bit. Um, and again, I don't want to talk too much about our club and the players because, it, you know, a lot of them are still playing. But again, players that are, are so loyal and, and do all the right things at times are the dispensable ones that can be, you know, pushed aside. And, and the ones that, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the most gets WD-40. The oil, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that, that is real. That's real in life, but it's definitely real in footy clubs. So people who can play in a bit, you know, probably have a, an ace up their sleeve with a skill ability, they probably get a better opportunity than those players that, that don't have that that really high end attribute. So um, I was, again, in that moment was like, oh, well, you know, I can go somewhere and have a clean slate. I don't back my ability in because I had enough self-confidence. It'd be good where I'm just getting married, so I don't have a family yet. So there was a lot of pull factors, but um, again, the staying home, building a family with, you know, my parents and, and my partner's parents at the was probably the priority. And that, again, I talk about perspective, in terms of perspective, that was more important to me than, and playing somewhere else and extending my footy career beyond you know, this year, call it. Yeah, 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 your family first, as you said, you're a family man. And um, yep. yeah, it's well said. Now that you look back, let's just say that uh, you had all the, the, who was, you know, who was knocking and what the deals yeah, were. No, yeah, openly. And I think it was publicized at the time, like Brisbane were a, a really good fit for me in terms of their list demographic. Um, they, were, they were coming up and I think Jared Lyons, um, just went there, didn't he? Yeah, so he, no, that was, that was the contract. I think that was the different, yeah. Um, so it would have been great and, you know, it would have been successful. They've had a really sustained, successful p- period, Brisbane, without achieving the ultimate success. You would have success. loved the sun up there, mate. Oh, but like <laughs> I, you know, again, I went and met Fags and his beautiful wife and family and that that was what really the hardest bit was calling him and I called him straight away when I made a decision. Like he's a great man, a really good operator and no doubt that people love playing for him because he's that that type of person. And, um, yeah, that was the – that was the one that it had come down to. Is that really yeah. tough, that decision? It was tough, yeah. It was tough because there's there's different motivations. Like, you know, the the footballer in me is, oh, it's a pretty easy decision. Um, you know, the heart and the law, because, again, like, you know, I've been around Bulldogs my whole life, so the supporters have known me a long time. Um, the players who, you know, some of my best mates. Yeah, this is, you've been through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's a that's a challenging decision. And I didn't, it wasn't the wrong one because I, I fully, again, mm. you talk about changing, I wouldn't change it. But in terms of football longevity, probably, yeah. It'd be interesting, interesting one, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, be interesting one. We'll leave it. That's sitting on the fence there a bit. Yeah, but. no, no, no. <laughs> well, I think you can, people can make their own judgment. But it's, um, I mean, I've got plenty of questions to ask you around the end of, end of your career. But like the, the, the reason I loved you summarizing it was, let's not skip over it, 2016. Um, I think it was round 18, you break your leg and then yep. the boys go on and obviously win one. Uh, how hard was that for you being, con- considering that you're such a, um, team man and you're a part of that whole team much yeah. like Bob Murphy I'm sure and yeah. um, as we know you don't get a medal if you're not playing yeah. but internally you're definitely a part of it but when you do walk away you just wish you had the medal and then that's when you go well maybe I'm not because yeah. I've been in an emergency and we've lost but I've definitely felt like oh I'm still not in the team yeah. whatever how are you feeling yeah. um, when they won it obviously you would have been stoked but like once the dust settled you know a month or two after like what was going through your head yeah it's hard because it- I don't think I've ever said this either. I um, have been injured quite <laughs> proficiently throughout my career. And that was the one season I played every game up until around 15, 16. And I said to someone, mate, I've played every game here. This is, this is unknown territory for me. Oh, so that's... then talk about putting the moz on myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, broke the leg. But I think immediately post that, it wasn't about, up until the, the actual prelim, call it, it was about whether I'd be able to play again. So the the overwhelming emotion and pain and, and the the horrific sort of injury and what's to come was overwhelming my thoughts. Um, and then, you know, we, we weren't meant to win it. Like it yeah. is one of the most magical stories and fairy tale stories in footy, which um, again, I'm a part of, but I'm part of the story. I'm not the story at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, going and, and share, sharing some of those moments with Bob Murphy and Jack Redpath, who was probably the other person that was was um, dealing with a long-term injury. Um, 
again, we, we came together and we banded together and we were we were friends, but it's like we've just got so much in common that we have to be best friends for a minute. Like we just have to share and lean on each other so much because we're going through the same stuff. And and we did that um, quite well because we, we wanted to have a positive influence on the group and we were involved as much as we could be involved. But again, you don't go to the grand final parade, you don't get a medal, you don't wear your jumper around with your shirt and your tie. Like you don't, you don't do that. So um, immediately after it, during it, yeah, you're, you're flat as a tack. I was so happy for – my best mates who won, but you are you are a flat human because you talk about the 25 years before that, what you've been thinking about, what you've been dreaming about. And this is, again, back to my perspective lesson, that that was so important to me. That was, and I've just not failed. Well, I have failed because we yeah. got there and I, did, I wasn't there. Yeah. Um. So, and that's heavy. And, you know, I, I cried a couple of hand, a handful of times in my life and I, I cried a lot around that that um that period um, in front of my wife, which, uh, again, I, I don't think I ever would. Um, and it hurt. And, it, and it's so finite and so it happens and it's so big in that moment um, and to let it all go and then again that holiday was really important to me when I got away and stayed away for a, for a while came back with a, a new renewed purpose of wanting to get back and, and, and play in another a flag but during all that that period of time and that thinking was about uh, no, it's not not about playing the game it's about creating memories because you don't know how many memories you got left because again whether I was going to play or not um, yeah. and then Again, you you start playing, and then you sort of okay. Well, is it going to be this year? But then dogs went through a flat patch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't blank finals the next year. So then again, you you're reevaluating like shit. Where are we? Um, but again, the perspective of then having a wife, growing a family, and I'll keep bringing you back to that. But that were the things that were important and were basing my happiness. Well said, mate. And it's um it's kind of it's kind of a blessing that that all happened around that time as well. Yep. Get your head away from poor me, my leg, and being you know as we say we're quite selfish when we're yeah, when you're playing yeah. professional sport. But um, because you do you drag mate, you drag your your mum. Oh, mate, dad, I think about it just, all the time. Like now that you're out, you see blokes, and I remember again, I got I think I had um won't name them, but had dinner with a few boys, and their team's not going too well. And I said, fucking fire up, fellas. It's more yeah, a life, you know, because I'm not even thinking about it. But you do when you're in it. It's yeah. all you think about. Oh, I got who I got this weekend or but training even, tomorrow. But even like the questions that you ask. Are it's, it's like questions are coming at you. You're like, are you even are you contributing? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Um, and going out for dinner and having a beer. Like, saw it on the um, man. what's that golf documentary? I, they painted Brooks Kepka pretty poorly, oh, I yeah, thought. But did, the, yeah. but you do. But what they did show is like his mind just completely elsewhere when his wife's asking him like some questions. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, whatever you do. Because he's obviously going yeah. through a form slump. So, yeah. um, mm. when was the contract year? Two thousand and so that was that was the first year. So the next year, so I played. I have 16, 17, 18 games or whatever it is in that year. And then I played 10 or 11 the next year because I, I missed. Mm-hmm. It was t- I was 10, 11 months. And then one more season and then the contract. Yeah. So you got back, which is, so you got the- but That was lucky too. Because yeah. Because I had that extra year to actually play footy and then yeah. and, and then get back. So it was, again, if it, if it had landed in another year. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. No, it, it kind of is, but not lucky because I know how hard you worked. Yeah. Um, your, your midfield turned forward. When you went midfield turn forward, what, what year was that? So that was 2020. 2020. Yeah. And that's a fun fact here for the listeners, and I know you wouldn't have brought up, that you, you led the goal kicking for the dogs. Yeah. 25 sausage rolls yeah. as a midfield turn forward. And it's just a credit to you, knowing what you're like, you would have said, okay, now this is my role. I'm going to give, and it wouldn't have been about goals. It would have been about pressure, um, you know, keeping the ball in the forward half, tackle, da, 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 make my teammates better, but then also score when I get it. Yeah. To kick 25, were you starting to feel like, oh, this is the new me. This is my new role now and I'm loving this? Yeah. So it was out of necessity um, because I was injured again in 2019. So I missed the last six games of the year. Um, and then, we had Bailey Smith come on board. Hayley Lipinski was playing a role, and that was sort of my roles. Which, and because they finished quite strongly, they were again they were in the team. They were, I wasn't in the twenty-two. So then in the last practice match, I thrown forward. Uh, I think I kicked four or five goals in the first half as a forward because it was again out of necessity, and then played. And that was COVID year, so it was a little bit disjointed. Yeah. Um, and again, thrown in there from a pressure. Um, I don't think I kicked too many goals in the first five or six rounds. Like I was, you know, would have kicked two or three and then just found a niche, um, worked on my craft. COVID helped because there was a bit of a break um, and I trained to be a forward and then, yeah, found a sort of little niche uh, every week and felt important and then leadership skills grew and confidence in the group and everything. And then, yeah, by the end of it, we, again, disappointingly lost to St Kilda in the finals and we should have won that game. 
Um, but then that sort of launched into being vice captain the following year. So there you go. Now you're vice captain. Um, this is where I get really confused and I want to dive in because as a mate, I, 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 um, and I get frustrated because because vice captains and captains, yeah, I know you are frustrated. How does a vice captain get dropped? Yeah. Uh, look, is, it peer, is it peer voted? Uh, that was peer voted, yes. So when a peer votes for someone and puts them up there, it's, yeah. it's a real powerful thing. I think when people get picked, as captain, that's still powerful. But it, when it's peer voted and everyone shuts up and puts a pen to paper and says, I want this guy to lead us and you're second, um, yep. how does a head coach, in my opinion, he has the final say and even the coaching group allow a vice captain to get dropped? Someone of your stature. Yeah. Um, look, mate, I've fought that question a lot. Um, I think the the disappointing thing at the time was it was so early in the year. I don't th- think what was, round was it? Yeah, round. Two, I think I played round two. So I remember it happening, going, "What is going on?" Yeah, and I played. I thought I, I did okay in that round, but then it was a blind ball decision between me and someone with leg speed, and they went someone <laughs> with leg speed. And again, mate, we had a pretty successful year, so I'm not. I'm not here to. No, no, you're going to be humble. That's what I want to ask you questions. No, you're no, get in but trouble. It's, a, it's a real question. Um, but the unfortunate thing surrounding that year and the circumstances is there was no VFL footy. There was, I think I played three or four BFL games because of COVID. Oh. So the actual avenues to get back in the team weren't as strong as normal. But um, again, you talk about being branded and being labelled. You know, I probably was labelled to a point of view. What were they giving you the label? Uh, just slow. You remind me of <laughs> Matt DeBoer forward. while we're talking. Because yeah. Matt, you, you, just the way you are, the way you got yeah. off field, so, inta- you know, so um, such a great team man, such a great leader. Yeah, the more we catch up, the more yeah. I'm thinking. But his difference was he actually got a chance. He got cut. But then he got to pick, when he got picked up at the Giants, and as we spoke about on the potty, it was like all those brandings were gone. And in yeah. fact, they become, like, people were like, oh, he's a really good kick. He hits the, f-. you yeah. know, like, Things yep. that people wouldn't say the yep. same thing at the other club. Yep. So um, I, I kind of feel what you're going yeah, with here. And the, and the style, um, again, our, our forward line, we had three tools and I was nearly playing as a tool because I, I was one out a lot um, in 2020 and that's probably why I was successful because one-on-one was one of my strengths. But with three tools, you got – I'm not a, a tool. Like I mm. played tall, but then if you look at the, the balance of a team, I wasn't a tool. So, again, I'm, I'm trying to justify – You them. are. You're trying <laughs> to help out the guy that's not letting you play. I still don't think yeah. – so, but, oh, but mate, again, do I agree with it? Of course I don't. You know, and how I, I had did you battle teams. that? How did you battle that throughout oh, the year? And were your teammates like, round two is not, no, it's not no. acceptable almost. Like no. if I was a member, but I'd be the, kicking up a stink. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was a few, um, but time just kept passing and I just kept getting no opportunity and I tried to stay as positive as possible, um, you know, being in the leadership meeting and- How uncomfortable was that? Uh, early days, fucking uncomfortable. Like more because you're, I'm saying and suggesting things that I have no control over. Mm. Um, but look, I, I'd like to think that I held myself in, you would have in, in a sure. high, you know, as high esteem as possible um, because it's hard on Bonty too. Like Bonty's a skipper and oh. looking at me and I'm giving him some guidance on things that I hear I say this, but I can't talk, walk it. Um, so that was, that's uncomfortable. And that's, I wish I just didn't, it was a different, to it changing things. I would have changed that element of helping him out and being able to lead, lead more on field. Um, because you're always playing catch up. How did he feel? How did he look? What did he say? Like you're not there. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so hard to give that feedback as a leader, saying, feedback, "Mate, yeah. I thought you did this well. We could we, we we could work on this." Yeah, but in the moment, in in like, how did the review go? How did the um? You're not there. Yeah, you know, it's like you're not a part of it. You're you're engaged to a point because you want to. You have to be, and that was my job. But um, yeah, the fabric of of feeling it. And, and and feeling and acknowledging how they were feeling. It's Did you turn to Steve a fair bit during that period and ask him for who yeah, was the I shoulder? To everyone, everyone. Turn to everyone. And again, you try and distract yourself, and that's where this work stuff that we spoke about the CV three would be hours ago. Yeah, <laughs> this CV is impressive. That especially twenty twenty one this year is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but that started growing, and again, the perspective bit helped me out a lot through this process. But then I got another taste for it halfway through the year. Kick three did all right, but then. It just wasn't in the plans. This players. is where the frustrating part was. You know, you're watching and like, you know, you're just like, what is going on? Yeah. Like, so, have you, okay, so let me just, let's not, because we could go around and edge, we go around the circles here. Did you, when you, did you, when you left the football club, look the head coach in the eyes and say, why did you drop me in round two? No, I didn't. I didn't. Do you want to ask him that? No, anymore. Just, no, no anymore? I'm done, man. I've, I've put it to bed. Um, look, if it, if it come up and we cross paths, it'd be a pretty open conversation, but I'm not chasing it. And yeah. like, I don't, I don't need to be, um, <sighs> it won't change anything now. No, it, won't, it won't change anything. It won't change in how I feel. Um, 
Look, I, I love my time. I love the people at that club um, and the players and, and some of the coaches. But I'm, um, like I said, it was pretty important for me to move on with my life and cut the ties. And I still support them. I got some great mates there. I go and watch them occasionally from the in the the. The nosebleed section yeah, up to you. Yeah, you've got to hustle a couple with of tickets, a, don't you? With a, with a hat on. Um, <laughs> but um, love my time. But yeah, I just, it was just disappointing. If you, if you think that I had a successful playing career, I could answer that quite quickly and say, no, nah, I don't think I did. And that's where you're being harsh. And that's what, <laughs> you know, you, you just certainly did. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's, I mean, I just wanted to ask that question because yeah. I think everyone would be thinking about it. Yeah. And this is the life of, unfortunately, the AFL system and talking about when yep. you're finishing, when it doesn't go to plan, um, this is just the reality. And I think this is what I love about doing these podcasts and catching up with mates and just yep. not to, not getting too deep into it because a lot of these private conversations should stay private, but also talking about what conversations didn't have, um, you didn't have because I just think that's the question that I reckon players would struggle with that identity stuff we we're talking about at the start because they're hanging on to that. Why didn't he tell me? Why yeah, didn't, but yeah. you being such a great man have just cut it, move forward. Well, I can't control it. Yeah. It's no point even thinking about it. I'm still going to be pissed off regardless of his answer. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. just move forward. So, um, well done. I think, yeah. um, but that, yeah, again, that's, and I don't want to say that's the answer either. Like, cause it's, it's really important to review and reflect. Um, but the way that I dealt with it is look, I've, I've had I've had some fun here. Um, it's my time to go, and we'll just put it to bed. Yeah, save you the time, save me the time, and we'll we'll move on. But the team goes to the grand final that year. That's what. That's why I was like diving in. Like yep. you talked about, you missed with the leg, then you missed with just being a vice captain. Yeah. Um, that's that's not being selected and in form with no backup games. Yeah, that must have been harder. Yeah, that's harder. That was harder. Um, again, being emergency for the back half of the year uh, a lot of the time. Which means you're in the rooms like we just spoke about. So you can probably almost give Bont feedback, but you've got the training top on. Yeah, you've got the so, training top on. I used to do that a lot, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we're the runners. We're all the runners. Who's so. doing top up running with me? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, just another layer, mate. Yeah. Talk about resilience at the start of the year. There's, I've got a bit banked up here. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, again, your, your ambitious, your, you know, your love, your goal centric and all this stuff. But um, when things are out of your control, I was out of my control, couldn't do anything about Hand it. Handbrake's on. Handbrake's on. Um, Again, you just try and find joys in other parts of life. Yeah, <laughs> and in, and and what were you doing in COVID? Because there wasn't many joys. Nah. Um. So my daughter was born. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So she was up in the hub with us in Gold Coast, which is wild when you talk about it. Um. But that I was still pouring into my work, but I still I don't want to. I still want to say that I'm trying as hard as I can train. Oh, I yeah. want, and I've got I I have I had self confidence that I deserved to be there. So. Any conversation I had is, I'm coming back. I'll be back soon. Um, and that launched into my 20, um, 22 year uh, and started playing and, and played round one. And I was going to play round one. Anyway, I was probably sub or something, but I was in the team. I was in the mix and I come back. So um, I felt like I was still I had enough to give and, and just given an opportunity would prove my wares, but got injured again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck the injuries. That's that's what it just, that's what people don't realize. How when you're doing so much and these little things are out of your control, and then yeah. when you got control, you get an injury. Yeah. Um, just break down because we, we I don't want to get too flat because you're, you're a fucking great man, and I um oh we're gonna sit here for we could sit here and do thirty of these. Yeah. But give me this. Give some people the skills. Talk about resilience. We've just broken down what you went through that year and a few other years, and there's more to come. But what is it that you'd be like, all right, guys, you know, no matter what you're going through in whatever circumstance, what would your advice be? Yeah. Uh, I'm always been process driven. And, and again, this, I don't want to sound cliche, but I always set myself goals. I always, um, again, whether it's, it's my ego trying to prove something. Um, but I always set goals to one, you don't want to use trying to defy someone uh, as your motivation, but to convince yourself that you can get there. Um, so when I got injured, I had a goal of, okay, I'm going to get back and play footy. What, what what does that take? And then you ask the questions and then, again, I'll use this word curiosity, ask, ask people, what did you do? What can I do? And a lot of people reached out when I got injured. Um, when I didn't play, okay, why aren't I playing? What can I do? Who can I talk to? How can I get better? Do I change change something? Because I want to get back to that goal. Um, now, that's that's challenging because it takes courage to, to brush off how – you know, sad you might be feeling or, you know, you, you get into a depressive state, which again, I don't think I ever really got into because I know, and I've had some people that have gone through that and I don't think I was there. Um, but I think that comes back to the support system of my family and my friends that are always there to ask the right questions to, 
to go and let me escape from the world of footy when I was in the thick of it, um, but also push me back and, and, and keep in motivating me to get to that point of, of, my, of my goal. So again, setting a target, setting a goal, whatever you want to call it, but then having a curious mind about how to get there, asking for help uh, in, in pursuit of that. Yeah, that's great, mate. That's good advice. It's that you don't want to go quiet and go into your shell. You got to just. Nah, but I'm not that. We're not that type of people, though. Like, yeah. And again, it, that doesn't that mold doesn't fit everyone. But for me, who is quite proactive, you know, we're, we're I'm not funny. You're funny, but <laughs> you know, we're ha- happy go lucky. We're, we're happy to have a laugh. You know, I enjoy people's company. I enjoy a beer. Mm. Um, but so that that fits my personality. I can't be flat because it's not it's not who I am. I'll ask for help mm. uh, and people will push me in the right in the right area. But having a support network um, and then a, and a clear sort of objective of where you want to get to and then feeding that through the energy of your support network and yourself and your and your, your drive is is what you know I see as a way out of those those harder times. No, it's well said, mate. I think it's an amazing advice. Yes, there might be some people that aren't like us, but there's yeah. no doubt they can take some of that and um, and apply it with, with whatever they're going through. It's what I love when I sp- sit down with people and ask them that stuff. Um, look, there's more adversity that comes. And I want to. I know you've spoken about it before, but um, we clearly know how tough it was um, on you and your family. Do you just want to touch on that period? And then I guess now that it's been a little bit longer, just talk about how hard it was the end of your career yeah. and like why you're not playing footy. Yeah, so I so I had surgery um, halfway through the year, um, and it was, I had, it was something that I was carrying for a long time. So it's twenty twenty two. Yeah, twenty twenty two last year, and it was something I was carrying since February, and it was sore, and I, it was hard to train. I was just getting through games. I had a lot of medication to allow me to train to play, but again, I'm a big boy. You know, I've got other problems. <laughs> I've got to change <laughs> nappies at home. Like there's, you know, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of the priority stakes, um, that wasn't the, at the top of the list, um, and then. You know, had, had a month off because it was that sore and then came back and played okay. And the worst thing was I was actually all in some form on one leg and then um, got to a point where I could hardly run. Then I've ripped my quad because I can't run and I'm just dragging. So I go, look, you got to scan it. I'm sore. Something's wrong. And toes were looking like real funky, real funky. And then um, got booked in for surgery because there was something severely wrong with it. Um, plan of plate uh, rupture or something, which is a pretty important thing. I go, oh, really? So – that's that's what that is, isn't it? Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Tougher than I think. Yeah, no, no, I was just like, well, that'd be great to know a while ahead, a while back. But um, got it fixed. And then, but my, again, one of my, I thought it was going to be one of my weapons. Look, I won't get it done if you think that I need to prove something um, so I can get another contract issue because I've still, mate, I'm 29. I've got a lot of energy. I love the place. And my footy career, my footy journey isn't done. And then I received enough confidence that, yeah, I was going to be there um, the following year, and then so just on that, you received enough confidence by management, players, everyone, mate. everyone. Yeah, so um, <sighs> yeah, right. Yeah, and again, it's not a sure thing. Please, nothing's a sure thing in life. Like they say, it's, unless the ink's there and yeah, it's dry or yeah. it's hit the account. But enough confidence for me to go. Oh well, I can go and get injured. I can get myself right. I'll get fit somewhere else, um, and I'll help out the boys where I can around the club. And um, yeah, and then it just we didn't go that well towards the end of the year. Um and sort of fell out of the finals race a bit and then we finally scraped in and then but then we sort of ultimately getting kicked out in the first round so it seemed a little bit of a failure from our list perspective and where we should have been um and then yeah it just sort of right at the end of trade deadline and all that stuff right at the, right at the end it was it was pulled from me fuck when 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 trade period was going um going on. What's going on, like with your? What's going on with communication with the club, the management group, and yourself? Yeah, so not enough, probably. Um, in hindsight, uh, look at we're, we're dwelling back on it because it's important, and you're brought in, bringing it up. But I think I just said, look, just let me know when you, um, you know, and and I, I'm, I'm happy to sign. Um, and they said, yeah, look, there's a couple of things that happened. There was a bit of movement, and we had a bit of movement. Dunks left. Um, Josh Shackey left, Hunts left. So it, this is what it, I mean. Yeah. Like it, so there's layers. There's always layers to it. And I'm attuned enough to know. And look, you do the maths every fucking week at training, don't you? In your head, on the board, you're like, yeah, that's one, two, three. Yeah, I'm in. And, and so I've done the maths a thousand times over my head, but yeah, it just didn't come to fruition, mate. And I um, didn't have a leg to stand on because I had one was broken. But no, <laughs> I, um, I didn't like. I didn't have any form to back it up. Um, I was getting older and we weren't playing that well and they needed to inject some fresh. And again, I'm not giving – that is the reasons that I was given. Um, but as soon as it was it was made, I, 
like I said, I cut the cord and said, look, mate, that's it, their decision, their prerogative. It's a business at the end of the day and see you later. <laughs> You're, you're, you're such a good man. You're still pumping up the club after, which is great because the club is special, but there's key people that have, you know, essentially not, I can't say lied, but it sounds like they've stitched you up. Um, <laughs> did you think like, so w with trade period, I don't know enough about this stuff. I need to sort of, I need a management group right here. <laughs> but, but once you, once they cut you, was it a phone call or did you have a meeting? Phone call. Where were you? I was at Woolworths. <laughs> <laughs> like did, I was did, buying, did, um, I was buying. Actually, <laughs> we'll, we'll pivot a bit. I was buying this milk. I found this milk, and I love this milk. <laughs> I remember because I've had it in my hand because um, I got a new coffee machine, and yeah, that's where I was. <laughs> so you, 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 this is what amazes me. This is what amazes me because it's just like you. You know, I know a lot of keep saying you're a great man. Like you're a great human. You're a leader of my Colty Cannon team. Growing up, we all looked up to you. You, you know, yeah. By the end of the career, you weren't the man, but you just you, you go. I'm the man. Wherever you want me to be, I'm a team man. I want team success. I'm a doggy. I've been feeding them water when I was 15, 16. I've been a part of it. My old man's been a part of it. This is a club. This is what we do. We look after each other. Yep. To get a call at Woolworths to say you're done after being told that you're probably going to get a contract, it doesn't sit well with me, you know, and yeah. I know it doesn't sit well with you, but I don't understand how they allow that. Yeah. Oh. And it happens yeah. at other clubs yeah. as well, no, but I yeah. just feel like- Because I think you've you've given a context of what the Bulldogs were to me and what my, like that that doesn't change- um, again, my feeling, but um, I've cut it in my emotional. I've just cut it. Yeah, and I hate bringing up about the yeah, old. No, stars, no, but as but in no, because I get what you're saying. But me personally, like it, it sits okay with me because now I've not it's motivation, but I, I can go and put my energy into something that I'm doing. We're thinking drones now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? But uh, like, if I didn't have that, but that's me. I'm progressive. I'm no, I can't sit still. If you didn't have something, you'd be in a really bad place. Yeah, that's where, and that's what's disappointing about the system in general. I think. Again, if, if if players don't buy into the post um, career transition through the AFLPA, and they've just been left on that lurch, it's sort of like, okay, wow, like how have they got the skills to cope? Mm. It just amazes me when you were cut on it, well, it's buying milk, <laughs> fuck, I know, um, and um, you know we know how you would have felt. I'd imagine everyone would. Did you think right next next club? Uh, or was you, were you that angry? Or like I'm fucking done with this. Um, oh, because I remember running into you. I think we were at Albert Park. I said, "Are you thinking about it?" And you're like, "I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I think fleeting, I'm done." Fleeting, but I'm just like, "Oh, look, I don't. I'm not going to try and bleed myself dry and sell myself to try and yeah, like yeah, I know, like a rookie deal and have to like train to uproot up, up my life and stuff." Yeah. Um, and with yeah. a family, it would have been like I can't almost I almost can't just go just through can't that. Afford to do that? No. Uh yeah. So how much how important it was to me? And then again, I keep drawing back to this perspective bit. Okay, in that moment in time, what's important to me, what's going to allow me to live the best life and create the best memories with my family. And that's going and, and, and trying to be a slave to the system and get a scratch at a contract was not it. Mm. So Yeah. That's why. Was it it if it was maybe a premiership window club? Yeah. No, I, man, I, I, I exercised it. I made the, Adam Ramo, Adam Ramo, that's my manager at the time, made the, the probe call, but it was, this was late October too. So mm. yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, a lot yeah. we had. Yeah. Like we didn't have the time on our sides. Draft was a couple of weeks later. What do you wish they did now that you know they're going to cut? Do you just wish, like, is there anything that you wish they did? Uh, oh, it's disappointing. I didn't get in front of the group, talk to the group, cut all some of the really important people. Um, that, look, I, again, if I had, about time again. I'd mm. love to have gone out on my own terms a little bit like that way, but um, in the moment I was chasing playing again. So, you know, they, they probably gave me the option to retire if I wanted to retire um, and would have been happy, happy daisies, but I was I was willing enough to play. So I lived and died by the sword and, and mm. got cut. Mm. And you're going through a few other things as well, which you've spoken about. I think to, um, you know, your mother-in-law passed the day before your son was born. I don't want to dive into it because I don't bring back but um, bring back scars. But these are the things that you were going through at the end of your career, and it's just so unfair, you know. It's just yeah. it's tough, and it's um, yeah. but it's just great to see you thriving. And that's why when you're like, I didn't think we we're going to talk about the drones. Yeah. Like I, I, I love it. I love, yeah. especially when you get someone that's passionate about something. You, yep. you, the energy's high, and all of a sudden you're asking questions. You're curious. I, I just love that you're, you're thriving now. And yep. um, as I said, you've got a wonderful family, and you know your old man. I mean. I'm, I, the old man's my best mate, but we don't do any business stuff together. All we do is drink lattes and talk shit, but doing yeah. like, you know, working together and, you know, having a business together, it must be so special. It is special. Um, and 
again, we, you talk about that, talk about resilience and things, some of the things I went through. This last period of working with him, um, you know, we, we talk about him being retired, but it's reignited his love for business and he's, he's always been a great coach and mentor to young kids. Um, so being having that access to him um, and in, I'm loving working with him because it's, again, that is final. Like he's engaged at the minute because I'm engaged, but, you know, hopefully it goes for a bit longer. But there, there's going to be a point where, you know, I go and do my own thing or take a little bit more control and he has to step back. So while we're living in the moment, I'm loving learning off him and, yeah. and he's feeding that energy and I get to spend time with him, mate. We sip a lot of lattes, don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's great. What are you learning the most? Like what can you pass on that you go, oh, geez, I didn't realise I'd learn that, uh, uh, that skill? I think, mate, you and I aren't patient. We're eager, um, but things require time and and diligence in that moment. Like, you know, if you, you have a meeting after this and you, you want to get a sale or you want to buy something. But no, have you done the preparation for it? Do you know enough about them? Have you scoped out other opportunities within the same or whatever you're purchasing? Or So the actual patience in in making sure you're well prepared and then not biting the bullet too quickly um, is probably what he's trying to teach me because when you're young, you're eager and you want to achieve the world and oh, take on the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's our- uh, Trying that's to harness our... <laughs> that. But then the put, well, that's, well, that's everyone's problem. But have, to have someone there who knows you, um, who can assess the situation, has been through some of this stuff before- and then um, make the appropriate decision at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, it's good. But, you know, a great sort of metaphor, not metaphor for it, but if you looked at his dealings and I, when when I first came into the scene with him doing this stuff, he'd speak for 90% of the time and I'd speak for 10 and, you know, throw in a footy gag or whatever and everyone, oh, great, which, yeah, is, yeah, which yeah. is funny. And then it turned into 50-50 where I was a little bit more comfortable and then it turned into 80-20 where I was controlling it, but then his 20% was probably more important because it was right at the crux. And that's slowly, the continuum slowly, you know, getting longer in my favor. And he would love that development, just oh, sitting back, you know, yeah. watching you come through. And as you said, yeah. very young still. So it's, um, oh, yeah. it's special. I oh, made it is special. And look, he's been very successful in his own right. And we keep talking about Steve here, but Sue's a big part of this as well, uh, my mother. Um, Again, Sue, I apologize for <laughs> what happened that day. Sue, Sue, the white dress. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've, again, I, I was very lucky. Um, we've been very, very fortunate to have both of them. Um, steering the ship, but also just being such great friends to me yeah. um, and my wife. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Um, oh, mate, it's, it's, it's impressive. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm glad I really, I, again, I appreciate you opening up, but it's, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And uh, I want people to understand out there listening or watching that when I ask, you know, Mitch a question, you, you also got so many friends at the Bulldogs football club. Yeah. So yeah. you can't, say too much of what you want to say or, you know, you got to be very careful. So it is very hard for me to ask these questions because I don't want to um, stitch anyone up. But yeah, it's just your your situation was very unique and I really wanted to ask a yeah. few of them. No, um, of but I love that cut the cord analogy. It's a really good one. Yep. Um, it's one that probably I didn't cut quick enough. Um, I think a lot of people don't cut. Some people are still fighting. They're yep. probably still hanging on. Yep. Um, and I think this is a really good podcast for anyone that does transition because yep. no one's probably... I don't, I mean, it's, just, it's an opinion thing, but like not many people would have had it so tough at the end, like you yeah. did. Um, and then bounce so quickly and, you know, being, you know, as you said, you're a different operator, but <laughs> it's, it's inspiring for others to yeah. see. So it's great. And when we say cut the cord, it's a fucking big cord. Like it, like it was, it was robust. Yeah. Like I put a lot of energy and I'm still like the seed, the seeds that I sowed with with players and 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 staff, like they're still strong. They're still there. So the fabric of relations, I haven't changed, but in terms of how I think and how I operate, I no longer operate under the Western Bulldogs identity. I'm now a father of two, entrepreneur doing business, and I'm very comfortable with that. So mm. that's you talk about a sign off. That that's yeah, like yeah, a sign yeah, off to my footy well, chapter. It's, yeah, it's a new chapter. Yeah, yeah. So. It was a, I think I was reading a you'd be proud of me I'm reading this book it takes me a while you know <laughs> Damien Villarosa big lots, shout out lots, lots of pictures yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, well, I wish it was pictured <laughs> I'd be able to get through it um, but Villa he's a great man we catch up and he yeah. goes I want you to read this book it's about storytelling and um, yeah one of the things was each chapter once it closes like the next chapter should not be anything you know it should be completely different that's what makes a book so good because yeah. you don't expect that next chapter so yeah. just thinking about it you should write a book or it's going to be a very good one to read yeah um, I'm thinking my, my about mate Tommy Boyd's done that. He's, he's, yeah. he's written a book. Oh, he's got a great story, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, thinking about, well, we've obviously spoken about um, fair, fair, fair bit of like the downside, but what's the things that you're proud of? What's something you're like, you know, we, let's talk about the ups, like some of the cool moments that you look back on. <sighs> oh, look, mate, they're all like, I used to love preseason camps. I used to love because what you do is you work your ass off for five, six days, and then you have a, the biggest piss up at the end. And again, you, you just go nuts. 
Yeah. Um, you've worked hard and you deserve it. Um, oh, look, yeah, I love the big wins, but I want, I want to steer away from, the, again, the, the football things because you can say, you know, winning a final or winning and playing in front of Collingwood and, and, and a massive crowd. But I loved, I loved like the initiation of the, of the young players into the group. Um, I loved having things, people over at my house. Um, you know, we, we used to go up to my mum and dad's farm and have players day and have everyone there. And like, I love those, but it's the, you know, the tangible bits where you're building relationships, you're making memories, having fun. Again, some, most of the time it's centered around having a few beers, but that's, I think that's where the stories come out. That's where the memories are made. People relax. Yeah. But I think the, one of the, the things that are great about footy clubs are the people that come on along for the journey the whole way. And we'll talk about fans here. I've had some player sponsors you know, they've been dear to me that have been there since day one and were my sponsor every year for 12 years or for 13 years. So that's cool. And that's something there, you know, I'm branded with them for a long time. And, you know, if I run into them, I, I have all the time in the world because they invested in me. They were good people. Um, and something that footy gave me that opportunity to meet them and to, you know, respect what they did for me over that period of time. So um, that's another thing. Uh, look, I love, you know, again, big on leadership and, and, and setting the right example, but helping people. So I loved being part of the leadership group for a number of years and then ultimately being the vice captain in the end, um, albeit in, in stranger circumstances than, <laughs> than I'd hoped. But, you know, being a leader at that club and having people still call me um, and ask for advice is, is something I, I treasure um, because it means that I've had an influence on them, but they actually respect what I have to say and, and, and how I can help. Because you do, you, you learn to listen after a while. You, you know, I probably early days were, were a bit yappy and just wanted to talk and thought we had all the answers in the world. But until you start listening and, and, and letting it, you know, settle, can you really help someone? Because you got to, you got to get, you got to, you got to fish out of them what they want to talk about first before you start throwing advice at them. So that's something that, again, that's another one of those CV things about listening and and then acting um, is, is, is something a skill that I, I sort of got from football. So. Um, Lots of lots of positive things. Um, you know, a lot of the, the best of Ferris nights with your partners and, and making sure the girls have fun together and going away on trips at the end of the season with with partners and players is something that you would have done as well, mm. which is, again, just part of that environment that you love and you cherish because you look back on you go, shit, we were lucky. Yeah. Shit, we had some Same fun. calendar, same schedule. Yeah, same schedule and you you know, the, the spring carnival time, it's just, it's yeah. just Christmas. Where are we going, lads? Yeah, going? that's what the thing. Doing? You don't, you don't get the, uh, like, hardly, you don't see many blokes anymore. You're used to seeing 45 like-minded, you know, pretty much like-minded guys every day, every morning. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. it's like, it's all gone. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. And I love that you touched on all that stuff. It is quite special. And yes. you're making memories. I'm sure you made heaps. And yep. um, that are, they are the things, the, the memories and the relationships, they, they're something that Absolutely. I certainly yeah. thought that was, um, yeah, did I, did I did I fill my potential? I probably don't think I did, and probably a lot of people don't think that either. But the relationships, I was like, oh yeah, I think yeah. I've maximised that, and that's something that you know it's uh, it's you're quite proud of. So it's it's great that you brought that up. But I, now we, you know, as I said, you. You come on here, you just, you, you go home. What, what's the saying? You, you, go, you don't come on here empty handed, but the, you don't leave empty handed is what I should do. <laughs> so I think oh, I'm just going to stick with the way I go. But um, our friends at Milwaukee Tools, they're amazing. Oh, and um, mate, I know that on the farm it can get cold. So, you know, we've got you the the heated jacket here from oh, Milwaukee. That, that'll be, um that the large should fit you. I know you're a muscly man, but I reckon it might, it'll, it'll fit you like a glove. Uh, that'd be nice, mate. Um, Thank you, Milwaukee. Big shout out to them. Now, this is a segment where I want you to talk about me. This is where you got to just- You? No, no, no. No, sorry, no, no please. I'd love to talk no, about no, you. No, 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 no more about me. This is about you. This is where you give yourself a bit of a pump up. Think about a time, the Milwaukee Tools handiest moment of your career on the field. When you think about the handiest thing you're on the field, the great man here can actually get up footage. So once you're telling me about the handiest thing you've done and it comes to uh, oh. it comes front of mind, what would it be? There could be a few, but- The handiest thing. This is good. Um, keep talking because I'll think. I'm trying to think of other examples. I mean, the funny one was the Jake Riccardi not long ago. <laughs> I asked him and he goes, oh, probably kicking two. And he, all his family goes for, uh, for blues. And I think the Giants cost them finals. And then the next week he kicked five. So we had to re, I was oh, like, we need to redo the segment. Redo the segment. Um, he was, essentially, it's all the boys highlights. It's Matty DeBoer's talking about kicking goals on the left. Everyone said he can't kick. I just spoke about it before. And yeah. then he goes to the Giants and he's just, you know, he's spinning and kicking goals on the left. Uh, might be a game you kicked a uh, few. I, I can remember. Um, there's this one. I'm tackling Andrew Swallow and it was a steal and it was put around on AFLPA and things and I'm supine. So I'm tackling him and it was about commitment and stuff and it was like my 
see if you can find that. But I think, again, pump up to Andrew Swell. He was an absolute gun. Um, but I was tackling and I was like fully committed. And it's like, look how committed he is. And I was like, yeah, I think it was, he was just shaking me. <laughs> it was so just strong. Like, I don't think I stuck the tackle, but that was put up in lights. I'm like, that's a random one, but see if you can find that's that. That's still one. very handy because if it's been pinned up all over the walls. Yeah, 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 it was. So, um, the I'm Superman. Like, yeah. So it was just, I was just tackling him, but it was a full body. But if you really break it down, it was because he was shrugging me and I was trying to hold on for dear life. <laughs> that's great. Was, oh, no, see if you can find it. That's blue collar. See what I mean? <laughs> How would you not keep this bloke in the forward line? He'd be trapping the ball in there left, right, and center. <laughs> Oh, that oh. time I kicked eight. Oh, no, that's it. <laughs> no, bring it. Did you kick <laughs> no, eight? No, no. <laughs> How many goals did you kick as a junior? Like, was a game oh, yeah, no. Like, what was your best we game? Kicked, oh, I would have kicked 10, yeah. yeah. But we like, we were winning by 200 points a lot. Yeah. Against opponents. We were yeah. lucky, yeah. Just sit forward. Anyone can do yeah, that. Yeah, no. Now, oh. mate, I've got the Rixies here. I've got you the uh, Marlin Dark Crystal Grey. Um, mate, phenomenal product they are. Yeah, thank you, mate. I appreciate your support. How are, how are Rick's trailer? Everything's going well. I uh, must say, we're very happy with um, where we're at and we're planning. Um, oh, look at that. Actually, I've matched it up with yeah, the kit have, and everything. Right. Look at that. He's got a bit of Matt McConaughey about him, I reckon, yeah. this vote. Do you get that a bit? Uh, yeah. yeah. By, by my wife, when I tell her to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> when I need a bit of an ego yeah. boost, I get it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they're going well. Thanks, mate. We're um, obviously got prescription and blue light and sunnies and we're trialing a little bit in the States. Um, obviously spring carnival and, and summer's around the corner in Oz. So yeah, everything's going well. I'm looking forward to um, this summer to see what we can do. Yeah, now more about you. This one's um, Rick's on tour. So if you were to go away with a couple of teammates, I'm really interested to know who the two would be over your career. They have to be ex-teammates or current that still play. But yeah. um, who would be the two boys you'd take with you? You'd take a pair of Rick's and you'd go somewhere on holidays for a week. Where would you go and who would you take? So I have to shout out to Kobe Stevens here. You ever come across Kobe yeah, Stevens? Yeah, yeah, great man. So he was a- uh, He's shooting a movie or something when yeah, I saw him. Yeah, he's, he's doing um, some great things with with um, Netflix. Uh, he's doing a doco on, on concussion, which is you know, an amazing. We won't go. We won't delve yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah, we'll another hour. Well, that's another hour. But um, I think I have to- It's kudos to him because he brought me along with him. He was a little bit more- um, experienced in the world of travel, worldliness, and I went to America with him. I went to Vegas with him and he has some energy. Like you've got some energy. He's, <laughs> he's, he's in your field, um, but him, because he, he loves a good time. He, he can't sit still, um, loves tanning. Obviously, he doesn't wear clothes often, um, but he's, he's definitely- Big rig what, as well. Big rig. You know, sloppy rig. Look, I wish I had the big rig. Bit of a, bit of a rooster, but um, nah, he was, but he was, he was one that was fun. Um, and then another. Well, I'll go to the other aspect. I'll go to a young fella. Um, Cody Waitman's one of my, my closer mates. So going away with him, he loves surfing, loves good food, very cruisy, but also up for a, for a good time as well. He so. looks like fun. He's fun. When you see the TV and the energy he provides, I love, yep. I don't know him well. I don't really know him at all. I've met him once for a drink. I think when the boys were in Perth, but he looks like he'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. No, he is, mate. And he's, um, he's going right too. Yeah. He's got something to offer. Um, again, he's just got to keep his body together and try and hold on to that youthful enthusiasm yep. because it gets Belted out of here. Yeah, you. he's going to keep going to the op shops and getting <laughs> oh, his kids, that man. Yeah, for sure. Where are you going with the boys? Vegas, um, you said, or is that just where you went? No, nah, that's where we went. I'd have to go beach. Uh, beach, boats, Monaco would be nice. Monaco. Um, that'd be cool because I don't I think we've had a Monaco with the Rixies food, yet. Food would be good. Food would be good. Um, go to the GP there. That'd be nice. Yeah, that would be good. Just on a yacht. Oh, oh where am I going here? Champagne, oysters. Oh, nah. You look the part. You look <laughs> the part. I reckon get that jacket back on. Uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, or just somewhere beach, like Hawaii's always. Yeah, good fallback. I haven't been to Hawaii, so there you go. There's some great options. Well, mate, anyone else out there that wants to look like the great man here, Marlon Dark Crystal Grey, use the discount code ACES, 20% off and free express shipping. Um, that'll be landing in your door in two days. Mate, thanks so much. Um, uh, we could obviously sit here for ages, but don't be shy. We'll get everyone back on. I uh, can't wait to hear all the uh, developments uh, around what you're doing away with the drones and agriculture and everything else. I'm sure there's more in the asset management uh, fund there with the old boy. Um, say good day to the family. But yeah, thanks so much, mate. I, um, it's good to see you. We've been seeing each other a bit more lately uh, now that we're, you're not playing. And um, I just wish you all the best. And yeah, really appreciate the open and honest chat. Nah, thanks for having me on, mate. And again, you've, you've done really well with what you're going you know, through with, with Ricks, but also with with obviously American Aces and the potty. And what are you up to? 70? I think I've done 78, I reckon, one with you here. Yeah, yeah. 79. So, mate, it's been, it's been crazy to, to follow you and see how well you're going. But I think it's one of those things that it's testament to our, um, you know, our juniors and the relationship we formed there, how strong it is because it's been great to, you know, reignite our, our relationship and 
we're going to take a keen issue to see how we're traveling from here and, and hopefully keep banging into each other and, and who knows, mate. I oh, need to get that. We've got to get that dinner that you guys, you and your old man, his yeah. mates do. I want you to start setting it up with our boys and just let's get everyone back together because right. I reckon that's a good excuse to get together yeah, and have a few fantastic. drinks. But thanks for having me, mate. Love Pleasure, it. mate. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for listening to another episode of Tommy Talks, where you literally can't thank you enough for all your support. Righto, we'll see you on the next podcast. Milwaukee's MX Fuel Equipment System revolutionizes the light equipment market by delivering the performance and durability demanded by the trades. From the MX Fuel Cutoff Saw to the MX Fuel Tower Light, MX Fuel has you covered without the hazards associated with emissions, noise, vibrations, and the frustrations of petrol maintenance. MX Fuel Equipment System, equipment redefined. Attention sports fans, planning an overseas trip to catch your favorite games? Look no further than sports where I am. They've got it all. League schedules, trustworthy tickets, and over 200 cities to choose from, all conveniently on one website. Plus, as an Australian company, they know the importance of great customer service for those long haul journeys. So visit sportswhereiam.com and start planning your dream sports trip today. Sports Where I Am, your ticket to an unforgettable sports travel experience.